Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Pirate. Black and White Beard. Chapter 61. The Kingdom of Dressrosa is located on a tropical island with a resort style. It is known as the, Land of Love, Passion and Toys. There are a large number of mushroom-shaped rocks on the nearby coast. The island is filled with the fragrance of flowers, and the delicious food here food is world famous. Gia ha ha ha. It's really a nice kingdom. Teach walked on the street and kept looking at the scenery beside the street, although he knew that all the peace in this kingdom was disguised and could not be seen by outsiders. There is still infinite blood everywhere, but what does this have to do with him? This world is a place where the jungle prevails, and all kinds of unfairness are simply due to the weakness of most people. Teach doesn't want to care about it, and there is no need to care about it. Teach was walking when he suddenly stopped and looked back at the dark alley behind him with a disdainful expression. Ever since Teach entered Dressrosa, he felt that there was always a pair of invisible eyes staring at him in the dark places. Presumably, this is the territory of, Heavenly Yaksha. Da Flamingo after all. With his character, the entire country has already he held it firmly in his hand. The arrival of Teach naturally attracted his attention. After all, the beating he received during the war was still vivid in his mind. Forget it. Teach shook his head, and then continued to move towards the king's heights, stopping and stopping along the way, looking very leisurely. Inside the kingdom castle. Ha! What? That guy with blackbeard actually came here. He's such a rare visitor. Da Flamingo couldn't help but rub his face. The shadow of the war on him has not completely faded away. Moreover, that guy with blackbeard this guy seems to have some kind of obsession and a special liking for his glasses. That's all, he is a guest. Since he has come to my territory, it would be rude not to greet him. Buffalo, go get our distinguished guest here. Torball, go and make arrangements. After the dinner, stop by my wine cellar to pick up a few bottles of red wine from my collection. Da Flamingo ordered, and after thinking for a moment, he called Dellinger over again. Dellinger, please go and tell us to suspend our factory for a while. Put all the goods in a hidden place first. Then let all members of the family be more vigilant. That guy is an unstable factor. We have to be more cautious. Okay, young master. The three of them went to where they should go according to Da Flamingo's order. For a moment, the entire Don Quixote family became nervous. At the same time, Kaido quickly rushed to Dressrosa based on the information provided by his subordinates. Qinglong's face was still drunk, but his speed was no weaker than normal. Blackbeard. How dare you capture Lousy's best man. However, I heard that Whitebeard's strength has returned to its peak. It's really a headache. Kaido is extremely reckless in the eyes of outsiders, but as the emperor of the sea, how can he stand firm without 800 tricks? It is impossible to run into a head-on confrontation with Whitebeard, although with the blessing of his own defense and vitality he won't die in the battle, but he will inevitably get a beating. He won't do such a laborious and embarrassing thing. Therefore, he chose the method that he thought was the easiest. Catch Blackbeard. Use Blackbeard's life in exchange for Jack's life. He is very confident in his own strength, so naturally he will not be afraid of Blackbeard who has a bounty of 3.5 billion. After all, Blackbeard can never be more valuable than Whitebeard. Strong, right. Although Blackbeard has three fruit abilities, which is more troublesome, Kaido couldn't help but shudder when he recalled the fear of being dominated by Whitebeard on the rock's ship. After all, he knew very well how powerful Whitebeard was at his peak. Thinking of this, Kaido couldn't help but speed up. After all, if he rescued Jack earlier, Jack would suffer less. Sio Waldo Prison. Hey! Why hasn't Lousy's meal been delivered yet? Can the chef on your ship have a sense of responsibility? If word spreads about the torture of prisoners, will you, the Whitebeard pirates, still have the face? Jack sat in the prison cell and shouted loudly at the members of the Whitebeard pirates who were guarding the door. Shut up. You've already eaten five meals today. Are you a pig? Also, please identify yourself to me. You are a prisoner. Do you understand, prisoner? A pirate he yelled with a headache. That guy Jack was quite brave on the first day he was captured. He said he didn't want the food he was given, but his body was very honest. After all, he also wanted to save face. But, after tasting the skills of the chef of the Whitebeard Pirates, Jack was out of control. 
The pirates who were yelling and standing guard at the door couldn't stand it anymore, so they had to report the matter to Captain Marco. What his captain meant was that the Whitebeard pirates didn't lack that little food, so Jack could just give it to him if he wanted. It's just that this guy's appetite is really astonishing. Every meal he eats is equivalent to the food of an ordinary member of the Whitebeard pirates for five days. And he has to eat several meals a day. The pirates standing guard at the door can be said to be it's miserable. After all, you are also the poster boy of the beast's pirates. Can you have some backbone? Besides, don't you have a chef in your pirate group? You act like a starving ghost every time you eat. I really don't know what to say about you. It's over. The pirate at the door complained and sent someone to the kitchen again. Jack sat in the cell and snorted. Although he was very reluctant to admit it, the food cooked by the chefs in his pirate group was indeed average. After all, their pirate group advocates force, even the chefs are no exception. There is no long-term chef. With time to learn, how much better will their craftsmanship be? Jack lowered his head and looked at his slightly fatter belly. Alas. Being a prisoner also made him fat. However, Mr. Kaido shouldn't come to save me so quickly, right? I think I can stay a few more days. Don't think about it, I'm just consuming their resources. It's not just for good luck. Well, that must be the case. Looking back to Dressrosa. In the King's Heights, Da Flamingo sat at the head of the table, looking at Teach sitting opposite him with a strange smile. Ha but, Teach with a black beard. You're such a rare visitor. Come here. Try my treasured red wine. Da Flamingo winked, and a beautiful maid next to Teach picked up the red wine on the side. He respectfully poured Blackbeard a glass, then took the bottle and silently retreated behind Teach. Gia ha ha ha. Brother Xiao Ming, you are so polite. Teach picked up the wine glass and pretended to take a sip, well, not bad. Red wine of this quality is expensive, right? It makes it hard for me to ask for it. Got it. After hearing Teach's words, Da Flamingo was stunned for a moment, then said with a smile, Hey. What are you talking about? It's just a few bottles of red wine. If you like it, take more when you leave. Oh, how embarrassing is this? You're welcome, I can still afford this red wine. Well, since you said so, I would be a little unkind if I didn't accept it. Teach raised the corner of his mouth with a bad smile, then just take a few hundred bottles. Da Flamingo sad face, OVO. Da Flamingo suppressed the anger in his heart and looked at the black bearded man sitting opposite him hugging each other, holding his own bottle of red wine from time to time. The red wine on the table was decreasing at a speed visible to the naked eye. Thinking of the small collection in his wine cellar, and then thinking of the hundred bottles of red wine that he wanted to give to Blackbeard. For a moment, Da Flamingo even thought that Aokiji had run into his body. Otherwise, what would happen to his heart on such a hot day? It may get colder or colder. Brother Xiao Ming, what's wrong with you? I look at your expression. Do you have something to hide? Teach's cold greeting made Da Flamingo almost fall off the chair. He wiped the cold sweat from his head and suppressed the anger in his heart. He opened his mouth and said, Hey. Mr. Blackbeard really loves to joke. How could I have something to hide? But, your expression looks like you are constipated. Da Flamingo. You are really joking. By the way, we have another great feature of Dressrosa. Da Flamingo had a flash of inspiration. Our arena is extremely popular. There are countless warriors in the arena. The battle scenes are really exciting. I wonder if Mr. Blackbeard is interested. Not interested in. That's great, why not? Da Flamingo was stunned. Blackbeard, it seemed that he was not interested just now. Gia ha ha ha. You're kidding. Why don't you show me around later? Teach looked at Da Flamingo with a look of amusement on his face. After hearing Teach's words, Da Flamingo's face that looked like the bottom of a pot improved a little. However, what comforted him a little was that he could finally save a few bottles of red wine in his collection. The banquet ended in such an embarrassing situation. Under Da Flamingo's angina, Teach only took more than 200 bottles of red wine, which was not much in fact, only two-thirds of his collection. Feeling heartbroken, Da Flamingo found an excuse and asked Dellinger, a cadre of the family, to accompany Teach to the arena. As soon as the two left, Da Flamingo's roar rang out in the castle on King's Heights. Mr. Blackbeard. This is the largest arena in the kingdom of Dressrosa. Mr. 
Diamante, the leader of our Don Quixote family, is the strongest champion in this arena. Dellinger he kept introducing the situation in the arena to Teach, but Teach was distracted the whole time. After all, Dellinger was his nightmare in his previous life. Wow. This young lady in the Don Quixote family is so beautiful. I will have material for my dreams tonight. These long legs. So exciting. Ah. Why? Why is he a man? My little sister is gone. Booyao. Destroy it, I'm tired. Mr. Blackbeard, you don't seem to be very interested. Dellinger smiled awkwardly, and then was kicked away by Teach. Lousy, I hate sissies the most. Teach said with a cold face, shut your mouth. Otherwise, Lousy will throw you into the sea to feed the fish. Dellinger was secretly angry, but with his strength, if he rushed forward, he would be kicked to death by Teach. Faced with the threat to his life, he had no choice but to close his mouth and follow Teach with a smile. The sky slowly darkened, the air became unusually heavy, and an ominous premonition arose in Teach's heart. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Blackbeard kid, Lousy is having a hard time looking for you. A powerful and unique laughter rang out from the sky, Teach's pupils shrank and he looked up. A mythical creature is entrenched in the sky, and the blue dragon that soars into the clouds and rides on the mist is in the sky. A pair of huge beast eyes stared at Teach, and finally let out strange laughter of, oh, 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 oh. Hundred beasts Kaido. Why is he here? Dellinger couldn't help but exclaimed. As a cadre of the Don Quixote family, he is naturally the biggest supporter who knows his young master, and hundreds of beasts Kaido his reputation shook the entire sea, and even their young master did not dare to challenge Kaido's majesty. Boom. Dellinger flew out, spat out a large mouthful of blood in the air, rolled his eyes and fainted. Lousy said, shut your mouth. Your voice is really unpleasant. Teach punched Dellinger and then looked at Kaido in the sky nervously. Why did Kaido come to me? Teach got the answer after thinking for a moment. There is no doubt that Kaido's behavior is definitely to save Jack from the drought. Although Kaido is extremely strange and cruel in many aspects, Teach has to admit that Kaido cherishes talents very much and likes to recruit combat power. If you want to become his subordinate, he welcomes it. He never has too much for a powerful army. He has an easy-going personality and he doesn't stick to trivial matters and is extremely tolerant of his subordinates. Obviously, Kaido is indeed a very charming person. No wonder Jack is so loyal to him. Ha 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 ha. Kaido of the Hundred Beasts. We don't seem to have any grudges, right? Why did you come to me? Teach opened his eyes and told lies. Faced with the strongest creature, he naturally did not dare to be careless. HMPH. You captured my favorite man Jack, so Lousy will naturally find a way to rescue him. Kaido snorted coldly, with a hint of impatience in his eyes. Then you should go to our base camp. Drought Jack is being held there, so what's the use of coming to me? Do you think Lousy is stupid? I heard that the old guy Whitebeard has regained his peak fighting strength. Now, isn't he just looking for a fight? Don't think that Lousy is easily deceived because of his big size. Kaido took it for granted. He said without any shame at all. Ah, uh, that's true. Teach didn't expect Kaido to respond so simply. Since coaxing didn't work, he could only think of other ways. Okay. Lousy doesn't have that much time to make trouble with you. Come with me if you are wise. After you rescue Jack, I will let you go. After all, I don't want to face the angry Whitebeard. Quote. What if I say no? Oh. Then Lousy, let's see how much water your 3.5 billion bounty contains. Heat. Teach couldn't help but explain, a hot breath was condensed in Kaido's mouth, and the next second, a thick beam of light hit Teach's position. Gia ha ha ha. Then let me see how capable you are as the strongest creature. A cold light flashed in Teach's eyes, and he instantly entered the half-orc state. Kaido, fight. Hot breath. Hell burns. Kaido's dragon mouth spits out scorching energy rays, and Teach's three dog mouths each spit out a scorching ray. The three rays merged together, no less than Kaido's dragon breath. The two powerful energies were scorching, and the violent aura they produced made everyone in the entire kingdom of Dressrosa look horrified. What's going on? That huge figure in the sky is Kaido. The only one who can fight with him is Blackbeard, right? Why are these two guys fighting in my kingdom? 
Da Flamingo said with a look on his face anxious, it's not that he is worried about the safety of the residents, he is only worried about his factory and family members. No, if these two guys really take action, Lousy's Dressrosa will probably be turned into ruins. Da Flamingo gritted his teeth, then jumped out of the window, stepped on the silk thread hanging on the clouds, and ran quickly go to the battlefield between Kaido and Teach. Da Flamingo was very fast. As soon as he arrived at the battlefield, the first round of confrontation between Teach and Kaido ended with a huge explosion in the air. The space fluctuations and energy aftermath caused by the explosion destroyed countless buildings on the ground. Oh, hey, hey. Gia ha ha ha. The two monster-like guys laughed at the same time. After a moment, Kaido Dragon twisted its body, and then dived towards the ground. Without any slowdown, it hit the ground directly. A big hole was made in the ground, and it was also lifted up. Bursts of smoke and dust. These two fools. Da Flamingo stood in midair and gnashed his teeth. The aftermath of the fight between the two just now made even him feel heart palpitations. At this moment, Da Flamingo realized how big the gap between himself and the Emperor level powerhouse was. He stood in the air, hesitating, looking at Teach, who was like a demon, and Kaido, who was terrified in his heart. At this moment, his unruly nature was completely restrained by him, and he wanted to go down and stop him. In this war, he was trying his best to contain his aura on the clouds. After all, he didn't want to be noticed by these two people, and then burn himself to ashes with a casual blow. On the ground, what was once a beautiful and bustling street has long since turned into ruins. Howling, cursing, and begging continued one after another, but no one paid attention to them. Uh-huh. It's such a joy. Blackbeard, your strength is pretty good. But, it's still a little bit worse. Let Lousy teach you how to teach a true emperor. The smoke slowly dissipated, and a huge figure slowly appeared in Teach's field of vision. As the smoke became thinner, Kaido's powerful aura slowly entered Teach's perception. Gia ha ha ha. The strongest creature. It's really exciting to have an opponent with such a name. Teach looked like a madman, and his aura continued to increase, and the two seemed to have a tacit understanding. The next second, the two the powerful conquerors burst out. Buzz. Buzz. The suffocating breath exploded instantly. Countless civilians' eyes turned white instantly and fell to the ground unconscious. These two guys are really monsters. Da Flamingo stood high in the sky and said in a cold sweat. He is far away from the two of them, and he also possesses Conqueror's Hockey. But under the pressure of these two people's aura, his Conqueror's Hockey is as immature as a newborn baby. The black Conqueror's Hockey and the blue Conqueror's Hockey confront each other. The sky slowly cracks, like a comb parted in the middle, and the earth slowly cracks, like a spider web. As for the street that was already in ruins, it is now shattered. More thorough. Thunder 8 trigrams. Kaido has no martial ethics, and the conqueror's dominance of the two is colliding. He picked up his mace and sneak attack Teach, a young comrade. Although Teach sensed Kaido's sneak attack, at Kaido's speed, the distance between the two was only half a second. The mace full of cold light hit Teach on the head. As we all know, the blunt weapons in the world of One Piece belong to immune to death people. Actually, it's not unreasonable, after all, Teach's head has not been broken yet. But, although it can't kill anyone, it hurts so much. Ah. After withstanding Kaido's blow, Teach felt as if his head was about to explode. Severe pain filled his nerves. For a moment, it seemed as if something had opened a gap in his brain. Kaido. Teach raised his head again, and his six eyes turned red. Then, he secreted the fruit with his left hand and shook the fruit with his right hand. Coupled with the physical strength provided by the three-headed hell dog fruit, at this moment, Teach's full strength burst out. Oh, 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 oh. Is the firepower fully activated? Boy, let me show you what the strongest creature in the world is. As soon as Kaido finished speaking, his body slowly changed. Dragon. Scales slowly appeared on his body, the nails on his limbs became sharp, and the muscles on his arms and legs swelled again. His beard fluttered in the wind, resembling the legendary dragon's beard. At the same time, a new growth appeared on his head. Two dragon horns. Dragon form. This is the strongest half-orc form for those with animal devil fruit abilities. Kaido, 
whose defense and vitality are already amazing, has been strengthened again at this moment. Zhang Sanchi Yin Nai Luo. Dark entanglement hell's tear. Kaido's mace is wrapped with conqueror's hockey, and it is so powerful that it even wants to shatter the space. Teach's claws are covered with high-grade weapon-colored domineering energy, and combined with the abilities of the three fruits, the tearing atmosphere fills the entire space. It can be said that the two most powerful moves collide together. One is Kaido, who is known as the strongest creature, and the other is praised by Marine as the strongest enemy in the near future. The sound of metal colliding came, and for a moment, Da Flamingo's brain went blank in the sky, and blood slowly flowed from his ears. As for those civilians, most of them bled to death from this blow. Perhaps because they were no longer human, those toys only caused serious damage, but fortunately they were not life-threatening. The two men's attacks were in a stalemate. What Kaido didn't expect was that Teach's claws were not inferior to his mace. The terrifying hardness coupled with the ability to tear, for a moment, his own domineering pregnancy that had been enduring all year round the raised mace actually fell into a slight disadvantage. Ah. Teach's claws suddenly exerted force, and his whole body shifted to the left. Kaido's mace suddenly staggered and hit the ground. In just a second, Teach started to move himself like crazy. The ability to shake fruits. Air shock. Crack. Earthquake. Crack. Fuji erupts. Crack. The high frequency of attacks forced Kaido to passively defend himself. I don't know how long it took, but Teach's brain suddenly felt a stab of pain, and the attack couldn't help but create a gap. There is a flaw. Kaido's eyes lit up, and he took the opportunity to strike out with another thunderous eight trigrams. This time, Teach flew out. His fat body crashed into buildings one after another, and finally Kaido's strength dissipated and he fell to the ground. And a small building behind him was crumbling, but now it was better, and the small building slowly fell down come down and bury Teach in it. That's not all you have, is it? Kaido tightened his grip on the mace. After the previous contest, he had already recognized Teach's strength. This was indeed an opponent who could make him go all out. What's the benefit of following that guy with Whitebeard? Why not become Lousy's subordinate? With your strength, you must be the vice captain of the Beast Pirates. Kaido is extremely confident, the three major disasters are all his confidants, and the Beast Pirates have always respected strength. Even if he makes Blackbeard the vice captain, his own Jin will not have any complaints. Gia ha ha ha. You want to recruit me? What nonsense are you talking to him about? Let's go together and kill him. Just what I wanted. Three voices came, and Kaido's pupils shrank with a more powerful aura. Isn't Blackbeard the only one in the ruins? Kaido thought so, but the Blackbeard who walked out of the ruins next made his heart tremble. Long time no see, teach. Yes, it's been decades. I really miss you. The smoke dissipated and Teach slowly walked out. In the form of a three-headed hell dog, he had three heads. The other two heads had no independent consciousness and were just accessories. However, under the education of our dear teacher Kaido, Teach's three-headed hell dog fruit has awakened. Kaido's teachings are like a toilet toilet, easily breaking the bottleneck that has been plaguing Teach for a long time, and he suddenly becomes enlightened. How can Teach be described as comfortable at this moment? Gia ha ha ha. It's been so long, my dear sister. At this moment, Teach's three heads have three consciousnesses, and the scene of him talking to himself is really weird. Bah. After living in your body for so long, the two of us are no longer ourselves. Now we are just a part of your soul. Teach's head on the left explained. Knuckle is right. Who told you that your body is stronger? Now the two of us are just two branches of your entire soul. The main body is still you. But after sleeping for so many years, today you can finally see the light of day again. The air outside is so comfortable. The right side of Teach's head took a deep breath of air with enjoyment. She had been sleeping all year round, and the outside breath was extremely tempting to her. Oh, hey, hey. Blackbeard, have you forgotten that you still have an opponent? Seeing Blackbeard in this form, Kaido was also very curious, but because of his reputation as the Emperor of the Sea, he did not take the initiative. Ask. Brother, who is this man? He looks so wild and ugly. How about we beat him into minced meat and throw him into the sea to feed the fish? The soul that resides in the head on the left side of Teach is named Marshal D. Knuckle, the youngest of the three, 
has been sleeping in Teach's soul for so many years, and her thoughts have long been the same as Teach's. If you have to give her an explanation, what she represents is it's Teach's evil intention. Knuckle. Don't be so violent. It's not good to think about beating and killing all day long. Besides, it will take a lot of energy to beat him into mincemeat. I think we should be more merciful. Cut him an arm is enough, there is no need to kill people. The soul that resides in the head on the right side of Teach is named Marshal D. Raya, the second among the three. She is the same as Nakir, except that she it represents Teach's kindness. Well, believe me, she really represents good intentions. But you have to understand that she represents Blackbeard's good intentions. Although I don't know what your situation is, but since you said so, let's fight Lousy with all our strength. Kaido stuck out his tongue and licked his lips, looking at Teach with bloodthirsty. The next second, the whole person burst out, and with the speed of lightning, it hit Teach's three heads with a stick. At that moment, Kaido's mace was only 0.01 millimeters away from Teach's head, but with only this 0.01 millimeters, Teach's hand blocked Kaido's mace. Ha 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 ha. Kaido, this time it's up to you to experience the power of the awakened phantom beast devil fruit. Teach said as his body began to quickly appear animal characteristics. And this time the form different from the past, compared to the somewhat monotonous changes before, this time, Teach's changes can be said to be even more amazing. Sharp fangs protruded from the mouth, and compared to the fat body, the out-of-place limbs became thicker. The big belly slowly disappeared, replaced by muscles covered with animal hair. There were two more tails behind the butt. His appearance also became more ferocious, and his whole body was emitting a strange red light, as if there was lava from hell rolling in it. Um. Kaido's heart trembled slightly. Teach's aura in this form has reached a new level. In terms of physical strength alone, he is probably not inferior to himself. But, how is this possible? Kaido is of the blood of the ghost clan. His physical strength was much stronger than that of his peers when he was born. After his unremitting training, his physical body has already reached an incredible level. What's more, he also ate the animal system that strengthened his physical body. Devil Fruit. Various factors have contributed to his title of, the strongest creature. And what about Teach? Not long ago, he was just an ordinary pirate on Whitebeard's ship. How long has it been? He has possessed three Devil Fruit abilities. After fighting with him, Kaido also realized the power of Teach Taijutsu. Strong, not to mention he possesses three colors of domineering energy. Lousy is Kaido of the Hundred Beasts. Thinking of this, the anger in Kaido's heart continued to surge. If this kind of genius cannot be loyal to him, he may become a being far superior to him in the future. Batang Thunder 8 Trigrams. Kaido roared angrily, swinging the mace in his hand like a meteor. Judging from the momentum of this blow alone, it may turn a hill into powder. Gia ha ha ha. Fangs of the Cerberus. Teach's three heads roared at the same time, stretching out his right hand and turning his claw into a fist. The fist was covered with thick armor-colored domineering energy, and the aura of destruction was even slightly stronger than Kaido's. Crush it for me. Teach's fist hit Kaido's mace, and the powerful recoil shocked both of them, and then the two of them stood still and fought like before. Ah. Ah. The stalemate lasted for an unknown amount of time, and the two of them pulled away again at the same time. Then, Kaido's mace crazily hit Teach's body, but Teach refused to dodge, clenched his fists with both hands, and his fists fell like a meteor shower. On Kaido. Thunder 8 trigrams. Thunder 9 trigrams. Thunder 16 trigrams. The fangs of the hell dog. The claws of the hell dog. The licking dog of hell. I think the licking dog of hell sounds much better than the licking of hell dog. The two sides just started fighting each other, and the blood sprayed out from time to time made Da Flamingo's eyelids tremble in the sky, and his usually calm and composed face was filled with shock. These two monsters. By the way, where did those marine guys die? Lousy doesn't believe it. It's been so long, and marine's intelligence system still can't notice Kaido's movements. Come here quickly, Lousy's territory is going to be destroyed sinking into the sea. Da Flamingo looked at the two fighting on the ground and couldn't help but cursed Marine angrily in his heart. Finally, Da Flamingo in the sky noticed a warship breaking through the waves on the sea. 
I am the newly appointed Lieutenant General of Marine Headquarters, Fei Changyang. I announce that you two have been arrested. Hurry up and arrest them without any unnecessary resistance. At this moment, the air seemed to freeze. Da Flamingo's glasses finally slipped down, revealing a pair of cross-eyed eyes. Kaido and Teach stopped at the same time. The two looked at each other for a second, and then... Hot breath. Hell's burning. Marine Headquarters new Lieutenant General Fei Changyang died. Um, continue. Continue. The two monsters fought again. Da Flamingo. I asterisk 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 asterisk. You ugly guy. You look like a bear and you still have the nerve to hang out. If I were you, I would find a pillar and hit you with your head. Sister, you can't say that. It will hurt other people's fragile hearts. This ugly gentleman, although what my sister said is a bit extreme, but with your appearance, it is better to cover your face when you go out. After all, it would be bad if it scares other children. Kaido and Teach are fighting fiercely, and the other two heads on Teach's shoulders contain the consciousnesses of his two sisters. Of these two guys, one has a vicious mouth, and the other has a gentle tone, but his words are harsher. The former did not give in too much. Kaido's face became darker and darker as he listened to the battle with Teach, and at the same time, he secretly had doubts in his heart. Am I ugly? Then let me go. But when he thought of Teach's big face, the doubts in his heart suddenly disappeared. Fart. Compared to you, Lousy's face is very handsome, okay. Kaido's roar deeply stimulated Teach, and probably the hearts of the three of them. It's better now, even though Kaido is not bad at all. Even my tongue can't resist the attack of three people. Kaido, you fool. Is Lousy ugly? I have dignity, okay. Teach couldn't help but increase the strength of his fist, and his fist had already produced residual images. Please remember one thing, dear readers, don't provoke women who love beauty. Especially two women who love beauty at the same time. Your name is Kaido, right? Do you have eyes? My current appearance is that of my brother. If I had the body and appearance, I would definitely be 100 times prettier than you, no, 10,000 times better. This stupid gentleman, I think what you just said offended me. Therefore, what I say next may not be pleasant. I apologize to you in advance. Ahem. Look at the one you have for details, please refer to Telegraph Monkey, phew, it feels much better. Kaido. Hey, hey. Can you two lower your voices? I'm right next to you two. When you yell like this, have you considered your brother's feelings? Teach's head hurts, very much, creation historic pain. Shut up. At this time, Teach's two sisters showed a terrifying tacit understanding. Teach. H-M-P-H. Lousy. Let's see how long you can keep laughing. Kaido increased the strength in his hands crazily, and the mace was turned into flowers by him, but even so, the damage he caused to Teach was still not as much as Teach did to him. Caused a lot of damage. From some perspectives, Teach's attack power is stronger than Kaido's. After all, he has three devil fruits. Kaido's defense and vitality are higher than Teach's. The title of, the strongest creature, is not its for nothing. The two were in a stalemate. They were competing to see which one of Teach's attacks would be the first to break through Kaido's defense, or which one of Kaido's physique would be the first to drain Teach's stamina. During this period, Teach tried many times to use the power of the Dark Fruit to deprive Kaido of the Devil Fruit's ability, but how rich is Kaido's combat experience? He always kept a relatively safe distance from Teach with the mace in his hand. Even if he was touched by Teach's Darkness Fruit and ability, he could instantly bounce Teach away with his powerful physical skills. Although Teach's Dark Water has the ability to attract those with fruit abilities, Kaido's size is too big. Teach's current height is only half of Kaido's. Hey, Kaido, how about we discuss this? Teach suddenly became anxious, because the purpose of his trip was to capture, ah, uh, no. It was to pick up his nephew Momosuke and return him to the Whitebeard Pirates. If he ran away because of his fight with Kaido, the name of this book could be changed to, shocked, Momosuke took the opportunity to run away while I was fighting Kaido. Oh, what do you want to discuss? Kaido stopped attacking, quickly distanced himself from Teach, and then looked at him with a puzzled face. It is not an option to continue the stalemate like this. With the strength of the two of us, there is no problem in fighting for 10 days and 10 nights. But I have some other things to do, and you also want to rescue Jack as soon as possible, right? How about that? 
So, how about you take two billion baileys and go to Crescent Moon Island where our whitebeard pirates belong, and then hand over the money and the people. Teach's suggestion made Kaido fall into deep thought. Yes, his most capable subordinate is suffering from the whitebeard pirates. As his boss, he naturally has to consider his subordinates. Jack. Boss, you don't have to rush to save me. I think I can hold on for a while longer. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, hey, hey. Your proposal is good, but Lousy can only give you 500 million belly at most. What? 500 million baileys. What are you sending to beggars? Drought Jack's bounty is a full 1 billion. If you really only have this level of sincerity, then we can only bring Jack's head to Marine, got the 1 billion bounty. That's not possible. Let's do this, I can also give out 1 billion baileys. What do you think? Hey, do you know how big Jack's appetite is? How do you calculate the food he eats in so many days? The price is 1.5 billion baileys. Okay, 1.5 billion is 1.5 billion. After the two people discussed the price, Kaido happily turned into a blue dragon and left. Phew. The battle is finally over. It's time for you two to go back, right? Teach looked left and right and said to his two sisters. Humph, I just came out to play for a while, my brother is so stingy. Okay brother, let's go back then. My two younger sisters are definitely extremes, one is very obedient and the other is naughty and overbearing. After some persuasion, coercion and inducement by Teach, Nakir finally agreed to return to Teach's body. At the same time, Da Flamingo in the sky also came to Teach. Ha! I didn't expect Mr. Blackbeard to be evenly matched with Kaido. I really admire him. Da Flamingo had a weird smile on his face, but there was a trace of heartache in his eyes hidden behind his glasses. It caused so much damage, how much would it cost to restore it? Gia ha ha ha. No need to admire me. Brother Xiao Ming, I want you to help find someone. He is in your territory. Teach waved his hand and said to Da Flamingo. Oh. I wonder who Mr. Blackbeard is looking for. A guy named Momosuke, he's my nephew. Right in Punk Hazard. Huh. Da Flamingo narrowed his eyes, of course, but please allow me to make a call first. After getting Teach's permission, Da Flamingo took out the phone bug. After explaining to Punk Hassad's men, Da Flamingo sent some of his men to drive a boat and led Teach to Punk Hassad. Gia ha ha ha. Dear Momonosuke, I'm here. Punk Hassad. This island is extremely strange. Aokiji and Akainu dueled here for the position of Marine Fleet Admiral, which caused the climate of the island to change drastically, turning it into an ice and fire island that is half ice and snow, and half burning with flames. The island was once home to three research bases for marine scientists, and it also housed some world government prisoners. And because of Caesar Current's horrific experiments, a large amount of poison gas was released on the island, turning the entire island into a dead island. There were only a few prisoners who survived on the island. Before Teach and others set foot on the island, a group of pirates wearing anti-gas suits and equipped with gas bombs took a boat to pick up Teach. They received Da Flamingo's order to collect all the confidential items in the laboratory. After hiding, he came to meet Teach symbolically. Of course, Teach is not interested in anything in the laboratory on the island. He has only one purpose here, and that is to find his dear nephew. Everyone took a boat to the port, and Teach refused the anti-gas suit sent by others, and walked onto the island in a swaggering way under the astonished eyes of everyone. All this is thanks to Teach's awakened darkness fruit. All poisonous gases approaching him will be absorbed and filtered by the fruit's ability, thus turning into harmless air. Although it is of no great use, it is so handsome. Nothing can stop me from playing B, unless there is a bigger B waiting for me to play. Teach thought this way, and then walked towards Caesar's laboratory under the leadership of the pirates. After walking for an unknown amount of time, Teach and his team finally arrived at Caesar's laboratory. The laboratory was entirely made of steel. Just like the people here, there was no warmth at all. Boohoo. Welcome Mr. Blackbeard to my laboratory. I am Caesar Current, the most genius scientist. The very distinctive Caesar Current walked over with his body surrounded by gas. The purple eyes and lips are really shocking. Where is the person Lousy wants? Have you found him? Teach stopped talking nonsense with him and directly asked about Momonosuke's whereabouts. He is in my laboratory, waiting for you to pick him up. 
Caesar did not dare to be careless. After all, Da Flamingo had already told himself that the person in front of him was a fierce man who could fight against Kaido. With his small body, I'm afraid I can't withstand his punch. Oh, then take me there. I can't wait to meet my nephew. Teach's eyes showed a trace of passion. Finally, I was finally able to fulfill my biggest wish in my previous life. Okay, please come with me. Caesar quickly walked ahead to lead the way, for fear of annoying Teach, and his attentive expression made people doubt his identity. Is this guy really an evil genius scientist? Teach thought like this, and after walking for a while, he finally came to the room where Momonosuke was. Gia ha ha ha, is my dear nephew in here? I'm really looking forward to the next scene where uncle and nephew meet. The joy on Teach's face almost condensed into substance. He couldn't wait to push the gate of opening. Finally, that one the little figure entered his eyes. The child in front of me was dressed in the traditional Wano samurai attire. The hair on the top of his head was shaved and a bun was combed on the back of his head. He was wearing a pink kimono and a pair of wooden gettas at his feet. After seeing Teach, his face changed. There was a clear trace of fear on his face. Ha 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 ha. You are Momosuke, right? Kazuki Odin's son. Teach showed a disappointed and unexpected expression. Sure enough, he did not inherit the advantages of Kazuki Odin at all. How could such a timid and cowardly person? Can he take on the responsibility of a country? Although he appears to be only eight years old, Teach, as a time traveler, naturally knows that the child in front of him is already over 20 years old. You, who are you? Why do you know about my father? Could it be that you are the person sent by Kaido? I'm warning you, don't mess around. I'm just a child. Seeing the ferocious looking Teach, Momosuke subconsciously he thought that Kaido's men had found clues and came to get rid of him, and he was suddenly frightened and panicked. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now that Mr. Blackbeard has found your nephew, it's hard for me as an outsider to stay here in this scene where family members meet each other. You two talk first. Caesar left the room very wisely, and conveniently closed the thick iron door. Well, this guy is nice and very discerning. Gia ha ha ha. Don't be afraid, come here and let uncle slowly pull out your teeth. Ah, no. Let me love you properly. Teach smiled as hard as he could and slowly approached Momonosuke, but there was something, it's not something you can hide if you want. It includes Teach's true thoughts at the moment. Don't come over here. The fear in Momonosuke's heart was magnified countless times in an instant, and the next second, he turned into a small pink dragon. Although it is a dragon, compared with Kaido's blue dragon, Momonosuke's dragon looks more like a small loach, still a very spineless little loach. Don't be afraid. Teach grabbed Momonosuke's dragon horns and pulled him up from the ground very roughly. The latter screamed in pain. What do you look like now? Ah, do you know that your father Kazuki Odin was Lousy's former captain? No matter in every aspect, you are inferior to your father. Teach's words made Momonosuke slowly regaining his composure, he stared at the ferocious Teach with wide eyes. The person in front of him indeed looked like the pirate his father once said, but in his memory, he had never seen him on Whitebeard's ship. People. Maybe this man was really his father's former subordinate. After all, he was still very young at the time and could no longer remember the pirates he had seen when he was a child. Are you really my father's former team member? Momonosuke asked in disbelief. Gia ha ha ha. Of course it is. Your father is a two-sword warrior, tall and impulsive. These are not things that an outsider can know, right? Teach smiled amiably. I used a lot of connections and finally got your whereabouts. Do you know how happy I am? Although Odin is dead, as his former team member, I have an obligation to make you stronger, so that you can personally avenge your father. Teach's words made Momonosuke's eyes light up, but then they dim faster. But my opponent is very powerful, I'm afraid I can't do it. Gia ha ha ha, it doesn't matter. As long as you obey my training, you can definitely surpass Kaido. Really. Momonosuke was obviously excited. Really. However, you need to endure hundreds of millions of pains. Teach pulled out a knife from the dark space and put it back the next second. What happened? Momonosuke knelt on the ground in pain before he could finish his words. He was stunned when he looked at the blood slowly flowing out of his lower body. Gia ha ha ha. Don't worry, my knife is very fast. 
You didn't even feel it. Right. Looking at his masterpiece, Teach laughed with satisfaction. Ah. Momonosuke, who was kneeling on the ground, roared in agony. The pain of losing his dignity was unbearable. Even before he felt it, his baby disappeared. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Teach squatted down and looked at Momonosuke who was in pain. As a man who stands upright, how can he cry and fall to his knees because of such a trivial matter? It's just an inch of flesh, cut it off. And without the desire that that inch of flesh brings to you, your you can definitely practice a thousand miles a day, and defeating Kaido will be just around the corner. Teach was like a pyramid scheme leader who kept brainwashing Momonosuke. Once he heard that he could defeat Kaido, Momonosuke's twitching face finally showed a glimmer of light. But the next second, he thought of his poor without an inch of flesh, what can I do even if I defeat Kaido? I am just a useless person now. Thinking of this, Momonosuke's resentment towards Teach became even stronger, and he wanted to tear off all the hair on Teach's body with tape. What a vicious idea. Gia ha ha ha. But, as a man, I naturally know how painful it is to lose there. Don't worry, as your uncle, I can't let you have no children. Wait until you successfully defeat Kaido. I have a way to make your penis grow back. As soon as Teach finished speaking, Momonosuke raised his head instantly, his eyes filled with something called hope. Yes, he is also his father's crew member after all. He should not lie to me. I will definitely be able to do it. It grows. Stand up and let me see your backbone. Momosuke. Teach suddenly shouted, which really scared Momonosuke who was in pain. Yes. Momonosuke struggled for a long time with the last bit of faith as support, and finally stood up slowly. Although the expression on his face was still twitching and his legs were trembling crazily, he still stood up anyway. Woke up. Gia ha ha ha. You are indeed Lousy's nephew. Don't worry, under my training, as long as you survive, your strength will be rapidly improved. Understood, uncle. Momonosuke didn't even notice the words, as long as you can survive, in Teach's words. He was trying his best to control himself to prevent himself from screaming out due to the pain in his lower body. As for Teach, what bad intentions can he have? He just wants Momonosuke to try out Garp's training method. Let him stay alone for a month in a primitive, dangerous, and wild forest. If he hasn't already death, no, he can definitely survive. After that, he was asked to smash a mountain with his fists to train the armament-colored hockey, and then he was asked to survive his own shooting to train Momonosuke to learn the knowledge-colored hockey. After all kinds of training, he had to face the final challenge. Training for terrifying actual combat. Teach will personally be his actual opponent. Although Teach is Momonosuke's uncle, he must not show mercy for the sake of his child's future, right? If you accidentally lose a few hands or legs during special training, this is normal. I think this is very important and can be passed away. Alas, kind-hearted uncles like me are rare. Boohoo. Mr. Blackbeard, please walk slowly. Caesar led a group of young men to stand on the pier, watching Blackbeard leave, and couldn't help but secretly breathe a sigh of relief. Teach, on the other hand, left with Momonosuke and seemed to have forgotten about the kinman guard who was in the laboratory. Uncle Teach, where are we going? Momonosuke has now adapted to the pain. Of course, his life in the near future will still be greatly affected. Gia ha ha ha. We are going to find an island suitable for your practice, where I will give you special devil training. Remember, if you want to give up halfway, Lousy will twist off your head with his own hands. Teach's ferocious expression made Momonosuke dare not doubt what he said, but when he thought of the miserable life that would follow, the passion in Momonosuke's heart had long since disappeared. Noticing the change in Momonosuke's expression, Teach couldn't help but secretly shook his head. Sure enough, mud still can't cover the wall. Forget it, for the sake of Odin being the captain of the second division of our Whitebeard Pirates, I decided to grant you a painless death. Teach thought. His kindness has reached the extreme. After all, after watching the original work, it really takes a lot of kindness to give Momonosuke a painless death. Uncle Teach, you told me that my final mission is to defeat you. Then after defeating you, can I defeat Kaido? Gia ha ha ha. Poor young man. Your dear uncle, I am very strong. Even that guy Kaido is not willing to fight with Lousy. Because in front of Lousy, Kaido can only get beaten. Teach's words shocked Momonosuke. 
He never thought that his cheap uncle could be so strong. But the next second, the idea that appeared in his mind was not to target Teach and think about how to defeat him. How to convince Teach to join your camp, help you defeat Kaido, recapture the kingdom of Wano, and make yourself the general of the kingdom of Wano. In fact, we can't blame all Umi for wanting to kill Momonosuke. For such an incompetent, weak and lustful brat, in comparison, I'm afraid his sister is more suitable to sit in the position of general of Wano country. Huh. Why is there a person floating on the sea? Dee's eyesight was extraordinary. He keenly noticed a black figure floating on the sea. He was thin and looked like a dead person. Somehow, Teach had an urge to save the man on the boat. This was the first time he felt a call. This feeling was extremely strange. Uncle Teach, is that a corpse? Momonosuk trembled and hid behind Teach. He didn't have the courage to take a look at the so-called corpse. Stay there while Lousy rescues her first. Teach stretched out his left hand, and the ability of the dark fruit was activated by him. The strong suction pulled the person floating in the sea. The next second, Momonosuk looked at him in shock. Next, the man suddenly flew up and was sucked into Teach's hand. This is. Momonosuke opened his mouth, but Teach ignored him. At this moment, Teach was looking intently at the extremely weak person. This person had an exquisite appearance and a graceful figure. He never expected that he was actually a woman. He's actually a devil fruit user. Teach looked at the woman, thinking about something in his mind. Forget it, take her with you first. Teach waved his hand freely, and then drove the boat again, leading Momonosuke and the unknown woman to a strange island. Gulu. The sound of waves hitting the hull could not cover up the sound of swallowing saliva. Teach turned his head and saw Momonosuke looking at the soaked beauty with fiery eyes. Good boy, those things are gone, but you are still so lustful. Really, it is easy to change the situation, but hard to change the nature. Teach smiled disdainfully, but the entire ship was traveling a little faster. Teach and his party drove for a long time and arrived at noon before they knew it. The sun at noon was extremely hot. The beauty lying on the deck slowly frowned, as if she was about to wake up. Ah. Suddenly, the beautiful woman lying on the deck screamed, and then hurriedly sat up. She looked around blankly, and then noticed Momonosuke who was looking at her in a vulgar manner. Ghost. The beauty suddenly burst out with astonishing speed, and slapped Momonosuke into the sea with a big mouth. Ah. Uh, help. With a, plop, Momonosuke entered the sea. Teach, who was sailing the boat, raised his eyebrows and quickly used the power of the dark fruit to suck Momonosuke up. After all, if Momonosuke dies without going through his own special training, then the fun of his coming to the world of One Piece will be reduced a lot. Ahem. Momonosuke coughed up a few mouthfuls of sea water after being rescued. Although the devil fruit he ate was an artificial devil fruit, all the shortcomings of normal devil fruits were undoubtedly eliminated by the artificial devil fruit. The fruit perfectly inherits. Hey. Who are you? Why are you wandering on the sea? Teach's ferocious face shocked the beauty all over, big pirate Blackbeard Marshal D. Teach. Why are you here? Teach was stunned for a moment, and then an uncontrollable feeling appeared in his heart. Gia ha ha ha. What? Do you know Lousy? HMPH. The notorious evil pirate Blackbeard. Of course I know you. After hearing the other party's words, Teach's face instantly turned ugly. What's going on? When did I become a notorious evil pirate? Why didn't I know about this? Former Marine Headquarters Major General, now Pirate Hunter Domi. Blackbeard, I will take your head. Domi's aura suddenly became fierce, and she used the six bad Marine moves on the street. The originally ordinary moves were used by her. Her hands are quite sharp. Lanjiao. The light blue air wave struck towards Teach, and Domi's confident move unexpectedly struck Teach. But what was shocking was that only a white mark appeared on Teach's body. What a terrifying defense. Domi's pupils shrank sharply. In most people's minds, Blackbeard is most famous for his three devil fruit abilities. But he is also very strong in other places. It's just that he is not as eye-catching compared to his various devil fruit abilities. That's all. Gia ha ha ha. After drifting on the sea for so long, your body is already too weak to look good. But you really gave Lousy a big surprise. Even if your physical condition is so weak, the attack you launched can make Lousy feels the pain. Yes. This is very commendable. 
Teach looked at the white mark on his body. After just a few seconds, the white mark disappeared. Momonosuke on the side widened his eyes, sometimes looking at the Imperial Knight's big belly, sometimes looking at Domi's stalwart figure. Gia ha ha ha, how about it? Do you want to become Lousy's subordinate and join my Blackbeard Pirates? Teach stretched out his huge hand, and the words he said made Domi stunned, and then many people became angry and slapped him. Opened Teach's hand. Are you insulting me? First was once Marine. Although I have become a pirate hunter now, I will always be on the opposite side of the pirates. I have my own justice. Domi looked angrily. She looked at Teach, but Teach's next words made her fall into deep thought. Justice. That kind of thing can only deceive ignorant civilians. Since you said you have justice in your heart, why did you leave Marine? Teach looked at Duomi, who was obviously flustered and lowered his head. Gia ha ha ha. It seems that there are some reasons. Let me guess, it may be related to Marine's decision making, or it may be related to the Tianlong people. What do you think? Miss Domi. After hearing the words Tianlongren, Duomi's whole body shook suddenly. The next second, she seemed to have had all her strength taken away from her, and she slowly collapsed to the ground. Dragon people. Why does such a thing exist in the world? Why? Duomi lost control of his emotions and couldn't help crying. I think I am very willing to listen to your past. Teach took out some instant food and a water bottle from the dark space, and gently placed them in front of Duomi, and then the whole person also sit on the floor. Momonosuke on the side saw this and quickly knelt down, but his sneaky eyes were always staring at Domi's body. Thank you. Duomi looked at the things on the ground, and finally couldn't help but pick up the water bottle and take a swig. After a moment, her pale cheeks returned to a little rosy. Then, she looked at Teach in front of her and said slowly. I was originally a major general in the Marine headquarters, and I have always believed in justice in my heart. First think Marine is synonymous with justice. I have always been conscientious, pursuing the justice in my heart, working hard to protect the weak and arrest those vicious criminals. But, speaking of this, Duomi's tone paused, and then she took a deep breath and recalled that long-dusted memory. That day, I led my men and just saved a town that was invaded by pirates. Although the residence's property suffered a lot of damage, fortunately, there were very few casualties. Just when I and I while the men were comforting the remaining residents with joy and laughter, a gorgeous big ship appeared. That big ship started bombarding the town without any reason. Did you know? That big ship carried enough artillery. Hundreds of them. The bombardment lasted for a long time. My men and I tried our best to protect the residents, but in the end we were unable to save the day. After that disaster, I was the only one who survived. When I returned to the Marine headquarters, I painfully reported to my superiors requesting to find the murderers and put them all in prison. My superiors told me that the ship was the ship of the Celestial Dragons. It was only because the island was damaged by the sea. Black smoke erupted from the thieves' attack, and the Celestial Dragons' mood was ruined, so they decided to destroy the place. What did those residents do wrong? What did my men do wrong? Those abominable species. A bunch of pigs. Quote. What a pitiable experience. Teach listened to Domi's story very carefully. Domi raised his head and silently looked at the face of this most cruel and evil pirate in the world. But you are so naive. Behind Marine is world government, and world government is controlled by the celestial dragons. Do you think they might punish the celestial dragons for some unimportant people? All the people in this world justice must have a premise, that is, there are no celestial dragons. How about it? Marine, who has a very tragic past, would you like to join my Blackbeard Pirates and work with us to pull the Celestial Dragons off the throne? Facing Teach's invitation again, this time Domi no longer hesitated. She hated the Celestial Dragons very much. This time she abandoned the justice in her heart and only wanted to seek justice for the civilians who died tragically at the hands of the Celestial Dragons. Gia ha ha ha. Welcome to be the tenth member of our Blackbeard Pirates. Dear Miss Domi. Teach stood up and opened his arms, looking up to the sky and laughing. The next second, he felt a warmth coming from his belly. Teach. Domi. Momonosuke. <sighs> well, Miss Domi, you may have misunderstood me. I really just want you to be our companion, and I have no idea of having a girlfriend at the moment. Teach said as he spoke, while thinking to myself, 
Really, what kind of girlfriend are you talking about? Wouldn't it be nice to bicker with Ace and drink with Saki? Duomi's face instantly turned cherry color, and combined with her hairstyle, she really looked like a ripe cherry. Her shy look is really pleasing. Teach. Bear with me, Domi is not a cherry and cannot be made into a cherry pie. One of the two men ran back to the cabin, and the other took the helm again, leaving Momonosuke standing there, in a daze. Uncle Teach, don't you have anything to hide? If Teach knew about it, I believe that Momonosuke's childhood would be more complete. Wanmu Island. As the name suggests, this island is full of trees. The entire island seems to have not changed with the changes of the times. Everything on the island is very primitive, and there are even many prehistoric creatures in the forest. Uncle Teach, if I go into this forest to practice, I will die. Momonosuke was so frightened that his nose ran out. He hugged Teach's thigh tightly, unwilling to let go. You have to believe in yourself, you are the son of Kazuki Odin. This island is not as dangerous as you think. There are only some ferocious carnivorous animals in the forest. Moreover, you have already paid such a heavy price, if you still can't become stronger and defeat Kaido, it will be a big loss. But uncle, how can a man act like a mother-in-law? Come on, uncle will take you in. Teach grabbed Momonosuke, stepped on Moonwalk and flew to the center of the jungle. Go in, my dear nephew. Uncle is waiting for you at the edge of the island. You can come out in seven days. After Teach said that, no matter how Momonosuke cried and shouted, he took Momonosuke away with one hand. He was thrown into the forest. Teach deeply believes that with the physique of human beings in the One Piece world, no one can be killed by a mere fall of more than 70 meters. Ah, I'm really exhausted after wandering on the sea for so many days. Okay, let's go back and rest. Momonosuke, you have to come out alive. Gia ha ha ha. Teach returned to their temporary base on the island, saying that he wanted to rest, but after returning to the base, he couldn't help but call Domi out. Hey, Captain Teach. What do you want from me? Domi obviously wasn't used to it yet, so he changed his name to Teach. Gia ha ha ha. Don't be so formal. Teach waved his hand, and then said with great confidence, Domi, you are a devil fruit user, right? Duomi's eyes widened and he lost his voice. How do you know? I don't think I said it, right? My dark fruit can feel the breath of the devil fruit in the human body. When I fished you up, the breath in your body gave me a very familiar feeling. Teach looked at Domi, hoping that the other party would give him an answer. Yes, my boat encountered a storm before, and the waves broke my boat into pieces. In a hurry, I could only hold on to a piece of wood. The storm lasted for a few days, and when the weather returned to clear weather, it became clear for a few days. Before eating, I discovered a strange fruit. The strange thing was that the fruit was packed in a wooden box and floating on the sea. After opening it, I found out that it was a devil fruit. But the situation at that time was no longer the same. Allow me to think more, I naively thought that after eating the devil fruit, I could regain some physical strength, but I still underestimated the side effects. Is this the so-called luck? You can get devil fruit while wandering on the sea. Teach was speechless. Such heaven-defying luck is really enviable. Then what kind of devil fruit did you eat? Paramesha shadow fruit. Huh. Moria's shadow fruit. Teach thought for a moment, and then formulated a strict training plan for Domi based on his past memories. She will definitely be trained to become a powerhouse far beyond Moria. The other side. Kaido got enough baileys, and after a period of trekking, he arrived at the base camp of the Whitebeard pirates. Roar. Whitebeard, come out. Kaido, who looked like a blue dragon, roared majestically. It's Kaido of the Hundred Beasts. Does this want to start a war with our Whitebeard pirates? Go and notify Dad and the captains. Dad is here, I have to pull off his dragon horns and make some wine today. No. After a burst of noise, Whitebeard led a group of captains to appear in front of Kaido. La 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 la. What's wrong with coming to the base camp of our Whitebeard pirates alone? Kaido, do you want to start a war? Lousy just so happens to have itchy hands. In order to avoid being said by outsiders that I, Whitebeard, am bullying you due to my strength in numbers, let Lousy come and fight with you today. Whitebeard said very domineeringly, holding a naginata. Hey. I'm here this time because the guy named Blackbeard on your ship told me that I can redeem Jack for 1.5 billion belly. 
You whitebeard pirates aren't dishonest, right? Kaido couldn't help but swallowed when he looked at the extremely powerful whitebeard. Oh. Is there such a thing? Whitebeard looked at his sons. Thatch nodded to Whitebeard and said, Teach did tell me about this a few days ago. Okay, this is indeed the case. You don't have to worry, our Whitebeard pirates will definitely keep their word. Josie, go and bring Jack over. Whitebeard looked at the huge Josie, and I'm afraid he also only he is the most suitable for this. Okay daddy. Josie turned around and left. After bringing Jack back, the two parties handed over money and handed over people. Mr. Kaido, I'm sorry that I failed. But I have consumed a lot of supplies from the Whitebeard pirates in the past few days. Okay, let's catch up and go back to your place. Don't pollute the air here in Lousy. After the transaction was successful, Kaido grabbed Jack with his dragon claws and left here without looking back. Looking at his subordinates who had become fat as balls and doubled their weight, Kaido fell into deep thought. Today is the seventh day that Teach and his team came to 10,000 Wood Island. Logically speaking, Momonosuke should leave the forest today and meet up with Teach. However, it is already noon and there is no movement in the jungle. Captain, will your nephew be in any danger? Do you need me to look for him? Although Domi hates the wretched Momonosuke, he is his captain's nephew after all. But after Domi turned his attention to Teach, there was no trace of worry on his face. Teach was lying on a wooden lounge chair, holding a cherry pie in his hand and wearing sunglasses to bask in the sun. Gia ha ha ha. Don't worry. If he still comes out alive this evening, it proves that his fate is nothing more than this. The sea is cruel, and a weakling like him has no right to survive. Maybe in a painless death here is the best destination for him. Teach's ruthlessness shocked Domi. During these days of getting along, she clearly felt that Teach was a person who attached great importance to his partners and his family. Like this how can a person say such a thing? Then there is only one possibility. Momonosuke is not his partner, nor is he his family. His father Kazuki Odin was once the captain of the second division of our Whitebeard Pirates. Although I don't agree with Odin very much, after all, we are all on the same ship, and we are all dad's family. However, after he returned to his hometown, he encountered such a big crisis and refused to notify us to help. We are a family. His behavior really made me very angry. But, it's also possible that he doesn't want to trouble you and thinks he can solve these things by himself. Trouble us. There is a disaster in his hometown. As the son of a general, he has the responsibility to drive away the enemies. But his enemies are too powerful. At this time, he should seek help from his family. All the things that happened, I only came to the last conclusion. Deep in his heart, we will always be outsiders. Domi was silent. Indeed, what Teach said made some sense, but as a Marine, she still couldn't accept this cruel reality. Domi, your current identity is a pirate. You can retain the last trace of justice deep in your heart, but you have to abandon all your innocent thoughts as a Marine. In addition to your family and partners, other people's words are unacceptable. I believe it. Recalling his gloomy childhood, Teach couldn't help but clenched his fists. Everything is the truth given by the lessons this body has suffered. At this time, Uncle Teach. An extremely weak voice came from the forest. Teach and Domi turned to look, only to see Momonosuk crawling out of the forest in a miserable state, covered in blood. His originally clean and tidy clothes were now torn to pieces. It was rotten, one of the clogs on his feet was missing, and the original samurai-style hairstyle on his head was gone. Now Momonosuk looks like a young Mediterranean old man. Gia ha ha ha. Very good. Congratulations, my dear nephew. You have passed the first training. How are you? How many beasts have you killed in the jungle? Teach was very surprised. He didn't expect Dao at all. No soup can escape from such a vicious forest. It seems that Momonosuk still has some merit. At this moment, Teach's colored glasses dimmed a lot. If Momonosuk can really survive his training, then his strength will increase rapidly. Even defeating Kaido is not impossible. But, why? Momonosuk looked at the leisurely and contented Teach, and the expression on his face became extremely ferocious. Why, uncle, with your strength, why don't you help me kill Kaido directly? I'm just a child, why do I have to suffer so much? Momonosuke yelled at the top of his lungs, as if he was going to take the pain he had suffered in the past few days. 
All the suffering was vented. Oh. Then how did you come here these days? Teach's expression turned gloomy. When did a little kid dare to talk to him like this? I found a tree hole and stayed in the tree hole for seven days. Momonosuke said very naturally, without feeling anything wrong at all. Then how do you think I, as an uncle, should help you? Teach stood up slowly and asked again. I think, uncle, you should call on all the Whitebeard pirates to attack Kaido's beast pirates together. Aren't you the strongest pirate group? It should be easy to defeat Kaido, right? Momozuki Suk said it matter-of-factly, but after hearing his words, even Domi, who had always been calm, looked at him with even more disgust. Gia ha ha ha. After we defeat the beast pirates, you can easily ascend to the position of general of Wano country. The aura on Teach's body became more and more dangerous, and his eyes were fixed on Momonosuke, he seemed to be waiting for his next answer. Of course. Wano country belongs to our Kazuki clan. And my father is your uncle's former captain. But please don't worry, I will definitely make the lives of the residents of Wano country better. Momonosuke said at this moment he was already imagining that he would ascend to the position of general of Wano country and live a life surrounded by everyone. However, Teach, who was already exuding black energy, interrupted his beautiful fantasy. Gia ha ha ha. Gia ha ha ha. It's really interesting. Then Lousy asks you, do you know how strong the beast pirates are? Lousy can tell you, it is very, very strong. Even our white beard see even if the pirate group declares war on them, they will need to pay a huge price to defeat them. Many former companions in the entire pirate group will die. Why? You want so many companions to die for this just by your words. Teach took out the pistol from his waist and walked towards Momonosuke with great disappointment. Uncle, what are you going to do? At this moment, Momonosuke didn't know where the strength came from, and his body retreated crazily. I thought that throwing you into the forest for training would inspire the manliness deep inside you, but you escaped like a coward. Are you really Odin's son? How do you look like him? Teach yelled angrily. Furthermore, even if your father is Kazuki Odin, our former partner, but if you want to ask us for help, you must at least show respect. Does Lousy owe you anything? Teach raised his eyebrows he raised his arm and shot Momonosuke in the thigh. Ah. My leg. The severe pain made Momonosuke cry. It seems that the death of your parents has not inspired your backbone, that's all. It's useless to talk to a guy like you. Don't worry, the bloodline of your Kazuki family will not be broken. I know you still have a sister. I believe that even if she has no talent, she will become a mediocre person after experiencing the ugliness of this world. What's more, Lousy doesn't believe that you two siblings can't even inherit any of Odin's advantages. Teach raised the gun and pointed it at Momonosuke's head. Let's hit the road, this is your uncle's last bit of kindness. No. Sister Domi, please save me. I don't want to die yet. Momonosuke's plea did not win Teach's mercy. As a time traveler who originally wanted to kill him, after experiencing Momonosuke's after all the disappointment and anger that Teach brought to him, how could Teach let him live? Boom. The gunfire rang out and blood splashed everywhere, just like the cherry blossoms on Momonosuke's clothes. Congratulations to host for fulfilling thousands of Siraya's wishes. Get the reward. The peak of three color domineering. Gia ha ha ha. Tongzi, I thought you were dead. My name is Saint Charlos, and I am the eldest son of the Roswald family. I am a descendant of the legendary creator. I am a noble celestial dragon. Because of our extremely noble status as Tianlong people, we will wear oxygen masks and isolation suits every time we travel to avoid being infected with dirty diseases by those humble civilians. Moreover, we Tianlong people own a large number of slaves. After all, being able to please us is the greatest honor for those humble slaves. But, just a year ago, a despicable human dared to attack me as a celestial dragon. That fogue. At that time, I was preparing to make a fish man my slave and give him supreme glory. But that despicable human actually attacked me when I wasn't paying attention. He broke my oxygen mask and took away the fish man I just got. My useless bodyguards couldn't even hold on for 10 seconds under that kid's hands. It took a long time before the losers from the marine headquarters came to save me. Because I breathed the dirty air breathed by lowly civilians, I lay in bed for half a month after returning to the holy land of Mariajoya. 
What's even more infuriating is that that boy actually ran away. Those useless marines. They simply wasted the huge amount of funds provided to them every year. Although I killed all the bodyguards that day in order to vent my anger, how could I possibly swallow this breath without torturing the boy who hurt me to death? Because of this incident, I suffered endless ridicule from my nemesis. I must take back the humiliation that brought me in the slave competition in a while. Lord Charlos, the auction house is here. A bodyguard in a suit said to St. Charos, who was sitting on the slave's back. HMPH, there is a pirate captain in the auction here with a bounty of 300 million. Buy him and give him a powerful devil fruit. By then, I can defeat everyone. Become everyone the envy of everyone. Thinking of this, St. Charles couldn't help but smile proudly. Let's go. Let those civilians feel the handsome face of the noble celestial dragon. St. Charles said extremely narcissistically. At this moment, a man and a woman appeared in the field of vision of St. Charles. The man was extremely tall and somewhat plump. The facial features on his face were arranged in an extremely ferocious look. The thick black beard on his chin was tied into a with three braids, the whole person looks full of ferocity. And what St. Charles is extremely concerned about is the woman next to that man. That woman has a face like an angel, a figure like a devil, and a smile that makes Charles unable to stop. He can't wait to rush over and take that woman as his own. You too, go and bring that woman to me. St. Charles said to the two bodyguards beside him. He didn't care about the identity of the two people at all. In his eyes, as long as he likes her, he can snatch her away. All right. Yes. The noble St. Charles. The two bodyguards did not dare to neglect. They quickly came to the two people. One of them spoke, and the other made a gesture to catch the woman. Congratulations to you, this beautiful young lady, the noble Lord Charos, the celestial dragon, has decided to make you his thirteenth wife. Now come with us first. The man said, regardless of what the other person is like. In response, he stretched out his hand to bring the woman to St. Charles. Dragon. A terrifying chill suddenly emitted from the woman's body. She looked at the human-like creature not far away, her eyes full of murderous intent. Gia ha ha ha. You too, are you ignoring me? If you do this, I will be very unhappy. These two people with great contrast were Teach and Domi. After burying Momonosuk, Teach, as the captain, took Domi with him and prepared to return to the base camp of the Whitebeard Pirates. The two passed by this island. Wanting to buy some supplies, who would have thought that while shopping, I met this human like Draco. You. Do you know how distinguished that adult is? It's an honor for you to be able to fall in love with your wife. I advise you not to be ignorant. Otherwise, you won't be able to eat as much juice as you want. The bodyguard said, I am here for you. He said to teach with a good attitude, but his companion's face suddenly turned pale. Gia ha ha ha. This laughter is absolutely unmistakable. You are Blackbeard. The bodyguard collapsed and fell to the ground. Looking at teach, there was deep fear in his eyes. You too trash. You can't handle even a small thing. Facing the useless men, St. Charles deeply reflected the character of the Tianlong people. He took out his expensive pistol and killed the two men very neatly. Human lives. The remaining bodyguards standing behind St. Charles did not show any expression on their faces. This kind of thing has long been accustomed to them. In the eyes of the Tianlong people, the status of these bodyguards is extremely low, but for various reasons, they also had to sacrifice their lives for the Tianlong people. Hey, that ugly guy, dedicate the woman next to you to me. If I am in a good mood, I can spare your life. Facing the fierce-looking teach, St. Charles also felt a little timid in his heart. But when he remembered his precious identity and looked at the pistol in his hand, he forgot all about his timidity. Gia ha ha ha, Tian Longren. How dare you call lousy ugly with your appearance. Has your brain been damaged because it has been useless for too long? Teach pulled out the pistol from his waist and pressed it against the head of St. Charles. The cold touch made St. Charles's body instantly covered in cold sweat. Hey, civilian, do you know the consequences of doing this? Why don't you quickly put down the weapon in your hand and kneel on the ground to beg for forgiveness? Those bodyguards never thought that anyone would dare to disobey the heaven-defying dragon. People didn't react for a moment. Asshole. 
If you dare to hurt me, all your family and friends will be killed by General Marine. Street. Charles threatened Teach with his body trembling. Gia ha ha ha. General Marine. If they were really capable, the war wouldn't be like that. And. Teach's eyes suddenly became sharp, and the pistol in his hand slightly shifting to the right, one shot shattered St. Charles' oxygen mask, and then he shot again, knocking off half of St. Charles's ear. You dare to threaten me with my family. Tell me, do you want to die or not live? Teach's right index finger was pressed against the trigger, and finally he said to the Draco in front of him, let your men come out. Let's play a game. What game? You'll know soon. Are you all deaf? Come out quickly. Facing the breath of death, Saint Charles could no longer take into account his dignity as a celestial dragon. He shouted tremblingly, I gave you too much, and accompanied him with roars, world government agents suddenly appeared one after another on the originally silent streets around them. Gia ha ha ha, there are quite a few of them. Teach looked at the trembling agents around him and said disdainfully. Blackbeard Marshal D. Teach, what do you want to do? Release St. Charles immediately. If anything happens to this gentleman, the consequences will be serious. A person who seemed to be the leader of the agents stood up. He came out and told Teach with a bitter look on his face that he only hoped that Teach could spare the lives of the celestial dragons. After all, if anything happened to the celestial dragons, they would also be buried with them. Stupid pig. Why don't you just stay in your pigsty? You have to come out and wander around. Now, if Blackbeard is in a bad mood, we will all die here. The leader the agent cursed secretly in his heart, but his attention was completely focused on Teach, for fear that if Teach's hand trembled, St. Charles would take the lunch. You are Blackbeard. The great pirate Blackbeard. No matter how blocked the news about St. Charles is, he still knows this super pirate who is like a dark horse. Blackbeard is the slave that the Dracos want most. When he thought of this, St. Charles's brain, which was as big as a sheep dung egg, started to work crazily. Gia ha ha ha. I didn't expect that the precious celestial dragon St. Charles actually recognized me. But, the game must continue. After all, there are not many opportunities to play games with the celestial dragons. Ah. I can't wait, then let's let's start. Teach showed a smirk, and then he pressed St. Charles to the ground. As St. Charles screamed, the gun in Teach's hand slowly moved towards his little finger. Mr. Celestial Dragon, and everyone present. I have been thinking about a question. If you exchange your lives for an intact celestial dragon, would you be willing? Teach looked at all the agents and said something that made them sweat. Straightforward question. Mr. Blackbeard, as long as they are all dead, can I leave intact? A bright light instantly rose in the eyes of St. Charles. For him, the lives of all the people present together were not worth it. One hair of his is important. From some angles, I do mean that. Teach's smile looked like a devil from hell in the eyes of all the agents, but that smile looked like an angel in the eyes of St. Charles. Why are you still standing there? Commit your own life. If Lousy is even slightly injured, I will send people to kill all your relatives when we return to Mariajoya. Street. Charles's ugly face made everyone present. Some people showed a wry smile. As he said, they dare not disobey St. Charo's orders. Because they all have relatives. In the eyes of the Tianlong people, they are just existences that can be replaced at will. In the end, I actually had to die under the orders of the celestial dragons. How ridiculous. How sad. This world is so sick. The leading agent smiled bitterly, then took out a dagger from his waist and killed himself neatly. Boss. Some agents couldn't help but wailed, but besides their relatives, who else would care about their lives? Just a bunch of dispensable substitutes. The blood dyed the earth red, and the poignant scene seemed like flowers blooming one after another in a trance. Except for the pungent smell of blood, everything was so peaceful. Mr. Blackbeard, I have asked them all to commit suicide according to your request. I don't know if you can let me go now. Saint Charles said, but he was secretly looking at it in his heart. When he returns to the Holy Land, how many troops should be sent to encircle and suppress Teach Blackbeard? After insulting Tianlong, how could he be left unharmed? Gia ha ha ha. How naive is Mr. Tianlongren? Lousy just doesn't want to take action himself and expose the clues. If it's not what I expected, you should be thinking about how to get revenge on Lousy when you go back, right? 
Teach he sneered, and then slowly pulled the trigger. Captain, no paper can stop the fire. Sooner or later, Marine will know about this. Domi felt naturally happy, but she was even more worried about the revenge she would face next. Of course Lousy knows. That's why he didn't take action himself, so as to delay some time for us to prepare. When we go back, we have to start preparing for the war again. Teach laughed, and then left here with Duomi. Teach and Duomi got on the boat and couldn't wait to return to Crescent Moon Island. Under the sun's rays, Teach couldn't help but think of the memory left to him by this body. His father is a scientist and has extremely high attainments in some areas. Although he cannot go home often, he will often contact his family. The bailey he sends back is enough for his wife to live a prosperous life. But, one day, Teach's mother became pregnant. This was a very happy thing, because Teach's mother was carrying triplets. However, because they were triplets, Teach, whose physical fitness was far superior to that of his younger sister, robbed all the nutrients in the mother's womb. This also caused the physical condition of his two younger sisters to be extremely weakened. When their mother gave birth, both of her my sister is already dying. As a scientist, my father racked his brains and finally came up with a crazy idea. He used the technology he had mastered to fuse his three children into one. Only in this way could the three children survive. When the triplets were finally born, their bodies were strangely connected together, and the three children the heart is actually in Teach's body. Later, the three brothers and sisters grew up slowly. Because of having three hearts, Teach's physical fitness was far superior to that of his peers, but his two sisters were always in a dying state. Later, Teach's two sisters had the body slowly became smaller, and finally, it merged with Teach. To put it mildly, the three brothers and sisters merged into one, to put it cruelly, Teach swallowed up his two sisters. In the end, his mother died of weakness because of Teach, and his father became ill due to overwork and died young. But Teach believes that he is not an orphan. He still has a sister. Although her sister is already asleep. Yo. Teach, you're back. As soon as Teach and Domi entered the waters of Crescent Moon Island, the fishman Namuel, the captain of the 8th Division who was in charge of today's patrol, discovered them. Gia ha ha ha. You are on patrol today, Namur. How about it, is everyone okay these few days without me? Of course. It may be that the beast's pirates exploited the local residents too harshly, and since we moved to this island, the supplies we need have been purchased with treasure. Those residents can be said to be I am very happy and very willing to associate with us. Namur said proudly. Most of the Whitebeard pirates' sources of income come from robbing passing merchant ships or some pirate groups. Although they cannot be said to be rich enough to rival the country, at least it is more than enough to maintain the entire pirate group's needs. Gia ha ha ha. That's great. Okay, I'm going back first, let's have a drink together tonight. After Teach said hello to Namir, he and Domi boarded the base camp of the Whitebeard pirates. I met many members of the pirate group on the road, and everyone greeted Teach with a smile. Teach took Domi and the two of them came to the place where the Blackbeard pirates lived, this was a small courtyard. On the lawn in the courtyard, Badgers and Lando were sparring. Wayahaha. Captain, you are back. The beauty next to you is. After seeing their captain coming back, the Badgers stopped what they were doing and looked at Teach with puzzled faces. Domi. Gia ha ha ha. This is our new crew. Where are La Fight and the others? Teach looked at his little brother who was diligent in practicing and felt very satisfied. They are in their own rooms, and that guy fake oil has gone out to buy wine. Badgies walked quickly to Domi, bent down awkwardly, and introduced himself as a gentleman. Hello, beautiful lady, my name is Badgers. I am the helmsman of the ship. You can call me Brother Gia. Badgers put his long arms on his chest and his two short legs were slightly bent. The whole person's movements seemed very strange. Champion Giza's badges. You are a famous figure. My name is Domi. A former pirate hunter. Domi said very elegantly. Ha 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 ha. Pirate hunter. What an interesting profession. Badgers didn't care at all about Domi's past identity, but still smiled boldly. Hey. Captain, you are back. Lafit and others were called out by Lando, and everyone looked at the captain who had just returned with joy on their faces. Of course, Domi also introduced himself again, and everyone was excited for this new female member. 
except Shiryu, of course. He seemed to be excited only because of Teach's return. Ah, we have a female member. Feikyu, who had just returned from buying wine, saw the slender figure, and a raging fire suddenly lit up in his heart. His three steps turned into two steps, with the same expression as Sanji's on his face, and he came to Domi in front of him as if teleporting. Hello, this lovely young lady. I am Fake Oil, known as the Master Thief. I am in charge of supplies in the Blackbeard Pirates. I wonder if I have the honor to hear your fairy-like name. In fact, the current fake oil can also be called handsome. The long-term and high-intensity training has completely eliminated the wretched temperament on his body. After dressing up a little, he looks handsome. A man is born. Hello, I'm Duomi. Please give me your advice in the future. Looking at the exaggerated fake oil in front of him, Duomi had an awkward yet polite smile on his face. Ah, such a beautiful name. Miss Domi, I have a strong premonition. You are my destiny. Captain, what are you doing? As soon as Fake finished speaking, he heard something from his butt. He felt a sharp pain, and the next second, he was kicked out by Teach. Looking like this, you seem to be very free. Teach looked at Fake Oil who landed headfirst with a black line on his face. Then, he said to everyone, I have been away for so long, and I don't know how strong everyone has improved. What a state we have reached. So I decided that our Blackbeard Pirates will have a practical training tomorrow. The rules are that all of you must face me. Warm reminder, if your strength does not reach a level that satisfies me, then, here's a one-month devil special training gift package. Teach's words made the faces of Lafitte and others suddenly darken. Following Teach for so long, they certainly know how terrifying their captain's strength is. So except for Duomi and fake oil stuck in the ground, everyone agreed. Sighed. That night, in order to celebrate Teach's return, the Whitebeard Pirates held a grand banquet. Everyone drank happily, but the wine in Lafitte's mouth was a bit tasteless. The other sighed. Teach, this is my new cherry pie, eat it while it's hot. Saki, who possesses the thunder fruit, is full of firepower. With the speed of lightning, he gets the ingredients back and forth. With the temperature of lightning, he bakes crazily. Cherry pies one after another. This thunder fruit was completely developed by him to the extreme. Sachi's speed is getting faster and faster. Marco sat aside with a glass of beer and said with a smile on his face. Ha ha. I would like to call Saki the fastest man in the world. Ace also joked. Gia ha ha ha. Okay, okay, this much cherry pie is enough for me to eat for a while. Sachi, sit down and drink. Looking at the pile of hundreds of cherry pies, Teach finally let Sachi rest. For a moment, the three captains and one vice captain gathered in a circle, and cheerful laughter could not be heard. Whitebeard. Huh. Where's that Marco? He didn't even drink with his father. How unfilial. The next day. Captain, be gentler later. Fake swallowed thickly, picked up his signature weapon, a wine bottle covered with a domineering color, and looked at the astonishing Teach with a look of fear. Captain, if you lose this time, you have to give me one million baileys. My cigars will be finished soon. Shiryu held thunderstorm with a hint of fighting spirit in his eyes. Lafitte and others on the side did not speak, but silently adjusted their status, and must use the strongest attack to face teach. Gia ha ha ha. My dear friends. If you can beat me this time, Lousy can give you each a bonus of five million belly. On the contrary, if you lose, each of you will give me 500,000 belly. That's it. How about it? Isn't it fair? Teach looked at a few people maliciously, and fake oil finally couldn't help it anymore. Evil-minded captain. Don't you just want to steal our pocket money? I'm really impressed by you. Huh. You have a lot of opinions. Well, let's start the discussion. Teach gave the order, and then the whole person disappeared in place. By the time others reacted, Teach was already standing beside fake oil. Come forward. Captain. Um. Don't slap me in the face, okay. I'll try my best. Ba Tang big competition. Snapped. Captain, you are not trustworthy. A red mark appeared on fake you's face, and then he fainted. The remaining few people helplessly looked at fake oil who fainted on the side. Now it's better. The chances of winning the competition that were already slim are now even slimmer. Gia ha ha ha. Lousy just accepted the 500,000 baileys from that guy fake oil. 
Teach looked at the remaining people with a smirk on his face, his unabashed eyes seemed to say, stop struggling, hurry up pay the money. Ha ha ha. The captain's strength is still as scary as ever. However, I haven't even missed a day of practice. Badgers raised his right arm, and the already full muscle swelled again at this moment. Armed. The immortal fleet, the sun never sets elbow strike. Badgers used all his strength, his thick elbows were covered with thick armed domineering force, and his two short legs burst out at astonishing speed, just he was in front of Teach in the blink of an eye. The blow was powerful and heavy, sweeping straight towards Teach's head. Gia ha ha ha. What a good attack. Teach's eyes flashed red, and his right fist was covered with high-level arm domineering. Then he reached back with his right foot, exerted all his strength, and punched Badger's attacker. Come on the elbow. Chang. The sound of gold and iron clashing instantly filled everyone's eardrums. Unexpectedly, Badger's powerful attack was deflected by Teach's punch. Badgers looked at Teach in shock. He clearly felt severe pain in his elbow the moment the two collided. Now his entire right arm is still shaking. What a tough armed hockey. And why do I still feel strong pain even though my elbow is covered with armed hockey? Badgers looked at his captain with a puzzled look on his face, hoping to get the captain's answer. Gia ha ha ha. Armed color hockey also has a power similar to awakening. Most people in the new world only master the first stage of armed color hockey, but after that there is also advanced armed color hockey. Advanced armed color hockey can be mastered the power of internal destruction. What you are using, badgers, is naturally the first stage of armed color hockey. In the face of the more advanced armed color hockey, you are naturally no match for the latter. Teach stretched out his fist and let badgers observe it carefully. With his right hand, Badgers showed a look of realization on his face. Boom. Ah. Captain, you're doing a sneak attack. You don't have martial ethics. A red fist mark appeared on Badger's big face. With the blessing of high-level arm domineering, the pain caused by this punch was by no means ordinary. Comparable to fists. This is a battle. In battle, martial virtue is of no use. The warm-up is over. Come on, attack me with your most powerful attack. Teach opened his arms and said arrogantly. The supreme quick bottle. A familiar wine bottle wrapped in a thick, domineering and armed color struck Teach on the head. Lafitte and the other's eyes were as white as copper bells, and their mouths were wide open as they looked at fake oil behind Teach. Hee <laughs> hee. Captain, don't underestimate me. With the ability of the swamp fruit, I can penetrate into the underground and launch an unpreventable sneak attack for the enemy. How about it? My 500,000 baileys can be saved. Fake oil pinched his waist with both hands and looked at Domi triumphantly, as if he was showing off his heroic appearance to her. Gia ha ha ha. Not bad. A very interesting and useful move. Captain, I am very satisfied. Feeling the pain coming from the top of his head, Teach burst out laughing. And the captain will give you another 500,000 baileys. Teach's words stunned everyone. They stared at each other with big eyes and small eyes. They couldn't help but wonder, why is the captain so generous today? Has he been taken away? Really, captain? Ha ha ha. I didn't expect a stingy captain to be so generous. You guys just envy me. After hearing Teach's words, Fake Oil became even more proud, completely unaware of the increasingly dangerous features on Teach's body. Momentum. Of course it's true. However, this 500,000 yuan is your medical expenses. Teach pressed fake oil to the ground with a big hand. He raised his sandbag-sized fist high and punched him one after another. It hit fake oil on the face. Bad boy. Are you crazy? Lousy asked you to hit me on the head. Let you call me stingy. Let you neglect your practice every day and only know how to drink. Do you know that if your attack had been more severe just now, I would you may faint now. What a disgrace. Lousy will beat you to death. Ah. Ah. Captain, stop fighting, stop fighting. Fake oil hurriedly protected his precious face, silently accepting Teach's care from the captain. The remaining people looked at each other, and the next second. Go. A neat voice sounded, followed by an overwhelming attack. Wave elbow attack. Badgers waved his elbow again, and powerful waves were produced from the armor on his arm, attacking Teach violently. Amaha Toru. Lafitte used the devil fruit's ability to transform into an angel form. The feathers on the angel's wings were shot out by him like a sharp sword. 
The sharp feathers were even covered with armed hockey. Ito Ryu silent slash. Shiryu's whole body became transparent. He drew out his sword thunderstorm, and slashed at Teach's back with a great swordsman level slash. He didn't make a sound as he moved. King Kong pill. Fan Oka raised his beloved gun and aimed it for less than half a second. The domineering bullet tore through the air and shot hard at Teach's body. Poisonous apple. Poison Q did not pull out his sword. He just symbolically took out a brightly colored apple from his clothes and threw it at Teach in a very perfunctory manner. Lan Jaw. After recovering his physical strength, Domi's attack this time was obviously much more powerful than the last one. The huge blue chop was obviously very powerful. Elbaf's spear. Lando used the signature attack of a giant warrior. Although his height is far less than that of an adult giant, his attacks are several times more powerful than an ordinary giant. Golden Battle Axe. Shet took out the huge golden battle axe from his back. The heavy battle axe was like a pebble in his hand, and he threw it out at an extremely fast speed. Gia ha ha ha. Are you here? Let me see your strength. Small black hole. Teach laughed, and a pitch black sphere appeared on his left hand. The sphere was gently lifted up by him, and slowly floating in the air. The next second, a powerful suction force burst out instantly. All the long-range attacks were off track, well, not all of them. Poison Q's apple was only thrown a few meters away and fell to the ground early. Badgers and Shiryu, who wanted to attack personally, couldn't help but stop because of the huge suction force. Although the terrifying suction force did not make them lose their fighting power, it also greatly weakened their speed. This move is the one that broke Whitebeard's tsunami before. Now Teach can use this move very freely. After seeing everyone's attacks stop, Teach laughed and turned the black hole into nothingness. Then, he threw Shet's axe from his dark space come out. After all, this axe is quite valuable, isn't it? But the next second, something unexpected happened to everyone. Poison Q's apple suddenly exploded, and the violent toxin burst out instantly, covering half of the island. Poison Q, are you an undercover agent sent by Marine? Fake Oil, who was physically and mentally exhausted, finally couldn't help it, and he fainted for the first time. Ahem. Accident. Poison Q. Countless voices full of resentment rang out, and then on that deserted island, the dying but endless screams of Poison Q came. The screams continued for a long time. When Teach saw that there was no good meat left in Poison Q's body, he called everyone to stop. Poison Q, although your moves can easily injure teammates accidentally, as a captain, I still have to give you recognition. If this move is put on the battlefield, it will be an absolute killing weapon. I'm afraid this apple can easily kill it. Thousands of enemies. A terrifying smile appeared on Teach's face. There is no doubt that this poison gas weapon is the most terrifying existence on the battlefield. Ahem. Captain, can you provide me with some research funds? Poison Q, who had a bruised nose and swollen face, seemed to be in a more serious condition at the moment. He opened his mouth, and the four conspicuous gaps were so funny. Yes. Yes. Your weapons should come in handy after a while. But when equipping weapons, you also need to equip a large number of antidotes. If a companion is poisoned, make sure you can rescue him as soon as possible. Teach agreed generously. He ran out of a large box of treasures from the dark space and threw it to Poison Q without even looking at it. Man, thank you very much, Captain. After I get the tooth filled, I will start researching it. When he thought of his poor teeth, Q felt like crying. The captain's actions were really dark. What? You actually want to have your teeth filled? I think the cost of filling them can be saved. I'll go to Sachi's kitchen later and get you a glass of expired milk. After drinking the milk, your missing teeth will grow back soon. Quote. Teach showed his big teeth and turned his crew members into looks like himself. What a beautiful thing. Okay, the test of poison Q is over. I'm very satisfied. Now it's up to you. Teach waved his hand provocatively, signaling a few people to attack. Shiryu, who has always been arrogant and arrogant, naturally will not spoil his own captain. His famous stunt, Silent Slash, combined with the transparent fruit, makes it very difficult for even Teach's advanced knowledge and hockey to find his traces. Come on, captain, I'll give you a big gift. Badgers punched the ground, under Badger's intentional control. A huge boulder was separated from the earth by him. 
Just like the ice block on top of Josie during the war. It's just that the boulder in Badger's hand was much larger than the ice block thrown by Josie. Championship throw. Badger's turned his back to Teach and used all his strength to throw the boulder in the direction of Teach. For a moment, huge shadows covered Teach's surroundings, and the airflow generated by the boulder made people feel uneasy. Swallowed. Gia ha ha ha. Lousy is a black beard. Teach clenched his right fist and punched the air beside him. A large number of cracks instantly appeared in the air, and the cracks continued to spread, and eventually Badger's was thrown the boulder was torn into pieces. The fragments of the boulder fell from the sky, which forced the invisible Shiryu to distract some attention and dodge. Maybe when Shiryu's eyes noticed Teach, his pupils shrank sharply. I saw Teach's right fist covered with white light waves, and the next second it hit the ground hard. Earthquake. So far, another island has disappeared from the world of One Piece. Teach led Lafitte and the others, who were bruised and swollen, back to Crescent Moon Island. Before their buttocks were hot, their father called them over. Dad, I'm in. Teach knocked on the door and then entered Whitebeard's room. In the huge room, Whitebeard was holding his huge wine bottle, lying on his extra-large bed, drinking wine leisurely. What was surprising was that Whitebeard actually took off the turban he wore all year round. The originally small hair in the headscarf has grown again at this moment. The golden hair and the disappeared wrinkles all show the peak of white beard. G U la la la. Teach, you are here. Sit down first and have a drink with daddy. Whitebeard pointed to the wine cabinet in the room, indicating to Teach that he could get whatever he wanted to drink. Gia ha ha ha. Then I won't be polite. Teach's eyes lit up. You must know that the wine that Whitebeard can put in the wine cabinet is naturally the best of the best. I didn't expect that the always stingy dad would be like this today. Generous. Teach unceremoniously took out a bottle of wine that seemed to be worth a lot, pulled off the gold-plated bottle cap, and started drinking. Gia ha ha ha. Sure enough, the taste of dad's collection is different. Teach sat comfortably on the comfortable chair. Then the more he thought about it, the more something was wrong, and an ominous premonition slowly rose in his heart. By the way, why is dad so weird today? This kind of good wine is only available during grand festivals, so dad is willing to bear the pain and give some to his captains to taste. Sure enough, a sly smile appeared on Whitebeard's face. How's it going? Dad's wine tastes good, right? Don't worry, don't look at dad with that look. Dad just has a small thing he wants you to do. I knew it. With your character, dad, this wine is definitely not for nothing. Teach covered his forehead and was fooled. What's the matter? Dad, it doesn't matter. Gu la la la. That old lady big mom sent an invitation letter to Lousy. She wants our whitebeard pirates to send people to attend her tea party. It is said that this seems to be her 43rd wedding. What a surprise shameless old woman. But we, the Whitebeard Pirates, have nothing to do with the Big Mom Pirates, right? Why did she invite us? Has she forgotten that we ignored us before? Teach was puzzled, but Whitebeard's words made him lost in thought. HMPH. It's not like that brat from Halta has fallen in love with Charlotte Bovar of the Big Mom Pirates. The old woman said that as long as she is willing to send someone to the tea party this time, she can marry Bovar to Halta. Otherwise, Lousy won't pay attention to her. Teach thought carefully about the looks of these two people, and then twitched the corner of his mouth, Dad, are you serious? Are these two people really suitable? Okay, okay, let's do this. As long as you are willing to go to the Big Mom Pirates for a tea party this time, when you come back, Dad can give you three more bottles of wine. Whitebeard is not as heroic as Whitebeard. Although Teach is full of doubts, but I had no choice but to obey my father's orders. Who makes yourself greedy? I know dad, then I will take Lafitte and the others with me. But don't forget the good wine you want to give me. Teach said, turned and left Whitebeard's room. After confirming that Teach had gone away, the corners of Whitebeard's mouth suddenly raised sharply. Gu la la la. My silly son, if it weren't for that guy auntie wanting to marry Smoothie to you, dad wouldn't let you go. Alas, you're over 40 years old, and you still don't know how to worry about it. It's really unfilial for me to do this important thing in my life. Kingdom of Totland. This is Auntie's base camp, with Cake Island as the main body and 34 islands scattered nearby. A total of 34 ministers govern it respectively. 
It is collectively called the Kingdom of Totland, and outsiders also call it Wangguo. Four emperors' auntie is the queen of this country. She hopes that this country will become a utopia that unifies all races in the world. Auntie hopes to build a home where all races and tribes members in the world can coexist harmoniously. Currently, only three races are known to be outside the utopia. Terran, including the giants, dragons and Lunaria. As soon as the Thunder Gaba carrying Teach and his party entered the territorial waters of all nations, a candy pie-shaped battleship slowly approached. After Teach showed the invitation letter given to him by his father, the battleship led lead the group of people from the area to the most important island in the world, Cake Island. This is where Auntie lives, and it is also the place where this tea party is held. Gia ha ha ha. It's such a strange island. This sweet smell is really intoxicating. Teach and his party landed on Cake Island. Different from Teach's previous impression, the Cake Island they saw this time was even more. To shock you, can you imagine what it would be like to have cakes like hills placed in front of you? The architecture here will give you the answer. Wow, the cakes here, Captain, look very tempting. Lafit also likes sweets. Faced with so many cakes piled up, he couldn't help but want to take a bite. This sweet smell is really unpleasant. As a descendant of the giant clan, Lando does not like this sweet smell. For himself, what he likes is the original flavor of the big chunks. Barbecue. Those people are the Blackbeard Pirates under the Whitebeard Pirates. Isn't the leader Marshal D. Teach, also known as Blackbeard. I didn't expect such a big shot to attend this tea party. The Whitebeard Pirates and the Big Mom Pirates. These are two well-known royal forces. Many people who were also invited noticed Blackbeard and his group. They were shocked and couldn't help but wonder if something big was going to happen between these two emperor-level pirate groups. Cuckoo cuckoo. Welcome some distinguished guests from the Whitebeard Pirates. A man with a strange appearance and a tongue that looked like black and white came over. I am the candy minister of the Big Mom Pirates, Perospero. I am responsible for leading several distinguished guests to the Queen's Castle on our Cake Island. The eldest son of the Big Mom Pirates, Charlotte Perospero. The bounty is 700 million baileys. Gia ha ha ha. So you are the Perospero who sticks out his tongue for fun. I have admired my name for a long time, I have admired my name for a long time. Teach snatched the candy cane from Perospero's hand, looked at it carefully, and then tried to take a lick. Hmm. Surprisingly delicious. Ah, uh, Mr. Blackbeard is so cheerful. Mom has been waiting in the castle for a long time. Please come with me. Perospero was stunned for a moment, then smiled awkwardly, feeling helpless. He could only use his fruit power again to make a candy cane and hold it in his hand. After all, after holding the cane for so long, it would still be very uncomfortable if it disappeared occasionally. Captain, is it delicious? Give me a try too. Fake oil stood aside, looking at the oversized lollipop in Teach's hand, with a golden light in his eyes. Here, give it. What else do you do besides eating every day? Teach helplessly threw the lollipop in his hand to fake oil. After the latter got it, he didn't care whether there was Teach's saliva on it and opened it. The big mouth started to chew it. That, Captain, I want it too. Unexpectedly, it was Van Oka who spoke this time. After seeing how delicious fake oil was, he could no longer hold back his desire. He looked pitiful. Looking at Teach. Lao Fan, you are so good at this. Teach covered his forehead, and then looked at the other people. Does anyone else want it? Forget it, no need to ask. Teach turned his head and was about to ask other people. After seeing the longing in the eyes of everyone, including Lando, who didn't like sweets, Teach was completely confused. That's Xiaopei. Let's get nine more. Captain, only eight of us want it. Fart, can't Lousy eat it. Pero Sparrow. What's the matter? Lousy is also a big pirate with a bounty of 700 million. You guys, forget it, these bounties are not low, so you can't afford to offend him. Mr. Teach, please use it slowly. Perospero had no choice but to make nine more identical candy wands and handed them to Blackbeard and his group with a complicated expression. Please call Lousy the ruthless sugar-making machine from now on. It tastes really good. Xiaopei, why don't you hang out with me from now on? We will open a candy factory and we will definitely make a lot of money. Teach looked at Perospero very seriously. In fact, money is a trivial matter. 
Okay, it's not a trivial matter. But who can refuse a tool man who is not weak and can make unlimited delicious candies? Ahem. You are joking. Pero Sparrow could only show an awkward and polite smile. Looking at the queen's castle not far away, he finally breathed a sigh of relief. Katakori. These are mother's distinguished guests, you can lead them to mother's place. Pero Sparrow said impatiently to the non-mainstream man sitting on the high wall. I got it, brother Pero Sparrow. Katakori jumped down from the high wall, first touched the ground with his right foot, and then landed smoothly on the ground. The whole action looked very handsome. Teach looked at the man in front of him who was known as the pinnacle masterpiece of the Charlotte family. Katakori was tall, with short amaranth hair, and strong muscles all over his body, especially his legs, which were extremely slender. The large and small tattoos on his body matched his metallic style. The outfit, coupled with the white scarf that he doesn't want to take off on a hot day, makes the whole person show off his personality. Ha 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 ha. Charlotte Katakori. What a talent. What do you think? Do you want to join Lousy's pirate team? With you and your brother, these two young cubs, our Blackbeard Pirates team will be forever don't worry about not having enough food. It must be said that Teach's brain circuit is very strange. In fact, when he was watching Luffy's battle with Katakori in his previous life, he had seen Luffy eat a lot of Katakori's products. The sticky rice came out. At that moment, he had the urge to swallow Katakori whole. Katakori was startled for a moment, and then he habitually used his knowledge and knowledge to find out the future. However, in his perception, what happened soon after made his pupils shrink sharply. He also looked at Teach. It's getting weird. The famous Blackbeard actually. Mr. Blackbeard, we are here. Katakuli led Blackbeard and his party to a huge room. The decoration on the door of the room was extremely cute, with various pastries painted on it and matched with bright pink. However, the room that was supposed to be full of warmth was filled with an aura of terror. Mom. Mr. Blackbeard of the Whitebeard Pirates has arrived. Katakori knocked on the door and said to the room. Well, well, well. Katakori, have you brought all the distinguished guests? Come in. That magical laughter sounded. Don't think too much, it must be the four emperors and herself. Katakori pushed the door open, then turned back to Blackbeard's group and said, Dear guests, please come in. Then, he walked in the front, leading the Blackbeard group who were looking around into this huge room. In the room, a fat old woman with long pink curly hair, thick lipstick and light purple eye shadow, wearing a pirate hat and a large pink dress was eating with a large plate of snacks. Surprisingly, those snacks are smiling as if they are alive. Mom. Katakori bowed and said hello, then stood aside. At this time, Blackbeard and his group were looking curiously at the only woman among the four emperors in front of them. Well, well, well. You are Blackbeard, right? I didn't expect that Whitebeard actually sent you here. Do you want some snacks? The ant looked at Blackbeard who was holding a lollipop and a scepter in confusion. Guys, why do the lollipops feel so familiar? Gia ha ha ha. If you want snacks, let's have them later. Big Mom, I was dragged by the white-bearded daddy to attend your wedding. It's just a small gift, but I hope you'll accept it. Teach chewed on the lollipop while eating from a beautiful box was taken out from the dark space. The box was inlaid with a lot of gold. One look at it showed that it was worth a lot. Treasure box. Well, well, well. I like treasure boxes the most. Thank you for the gift. Next, let's talk about your marriage to Smoothie. The ant put the treasure box on the table next to her with excitement, and then he looked forward to teach and said, I told Whitebeard that it would be better for the two of you to get married as soon as possible. And I think the wedding between the two key members of our pirate group must invite a large number of reporters to make it public. Tell the world. And. Aunt Balabala said a lot, and everyone present looked extremely weird. Katakori's eyes widened. He never expected that his mother would betroth smoothie to Blackbeard. Although Blackbeard is very powerful and has the powerful force of the Whitebeard pirates behind him, but, this Blackbeard is so ugly. Teach looked confused, and his brain was running wildly. Suddenly, he had a flash of inspiration. Then he gritted his teeth fiercely. Let me tell you. There is no way my father can be so generous. I have seen cheating people. I have never seen anyone cheating on my son. Smoothie. Humph, what's so good about it? It's just that the legs are a little longer, he looks a little better, and he's a little stronger. 
Well, it seems to be really good. The expressions of Lafitte and others only looked extremely confused, but the expressions on the faces of Domi and fake oil were extremely exciting. Domi, didn't the captain say that he didn't want to find a girlfriend? Did he think it was too troublesome and wanted to get married directly? It's a shame that I threw myself into her arms in the first place. If I didn't tell you this earlier, what else would happen to Smoothie? No, I gotta think of a way. Fake oil. The captain is going to be single. Does that mean he will be more stingy in the future? After all, all the money will be handed over to his wife, so will he try every means to exploit money from us? It's over, my beautiful life in the future. No, snowflakes are falling, the north wind is blowing. Also, you two will have at least 20 children in the future, right? Our two families will each have 10 children. The children who inherit the excellent genes of you two will definitely become the strongest warriors. By the way, you. Stop. Big mom, wait a minute. Teach really couldn't stand listening anymore. Give birth to 20 children. Do you think Lousy is a stallion? You may be mistaken. I have no intention of finding a wife. At least not now. So, I appreciate your kindness. But Smoothie and I are really not suitable. Teach's words once again made everyone confused. Meditation. Katakori. What? Does this guy look down on my sister? You are so ugly, but you have such high standards. You should be single for the rest of your life. Bah. And that mentally retarded author chose such an ugly person as the protagonist, do you think Blackbeard is worthy of that guy? Domi breathed a sigh of relief, but the rest of the Blackbeard pirates felt chills all over. They looked at their captain nervously, for fear that he had any special hobbies. What did you say? Auntie leaned forward and looked at Teach with a sinister expression, and her tone of voice became fierce. I said, I don't want to get married yet. Do you understand? Do you need me to repeat it? Teach's eyes also became sharp. Is he afraid of Aunt? What a joke. Lousy is Teach with a black beard, how can he be afraid? Nearly four emperors. As soon as Teach finished speaking, the temperature in the entire room seemed to drop to freezing point instantly. The confrontation between the two strong men caused cold sweat to break out on the heads of the others. Just when everyone thought a fight was about to start, Big Mom's aura suddenly dropped, and the expression on his face became gentle. Well, well, well. If you don't want to, forget it. I will certainly keep my promise regarding Povar and Halta. Our two pirate groups will be a family from now on. For Auntie, can it is extremely cost-effective to use an ordinary daughter to establish a relationship with the Whitebeard pirates. She doesn't have to care about what her daughter thinks, because most of his daughters only have this purpose. Gia ha ha ha. That's natural, I need to take more care of her in the future. Teach naturally agreed, which was considered as giving the other party a step down. After all, he didn't plan to start a fight with Auntie directly. After about half an hour of getting along with each other's secrets, Blackbeard and his gang were assigned to their respective residences, ten connected rooms. Everyone, this is your room. Tomorrow is the tea party, so please go to bed early. Someone will send dinner to your room, said a chess soldier, and after that, he turned around and left. But Teach stopped him. Do you have all the snacks here? Teach asked expectantly. That's natural. We have any snacks. Gia ha ha ha. Great, send 500 cherry pies to my room tonight. It's a pity that the final goal was not achieved. With Blackbeard's physique, I might as well betroth myself to him next time. Auntie made her own calculations and laughed with satisfaction at her plan. Someone, send 100 cherry cakes to my room. Ha 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 ha. I have to say, the cherry pie made by the chef of the Big Mom Pirates is really addictive. It would be nice if there was less raw sugar. Teach opened his arms and ate his cherry pie while eating. Not forgetting to admire it at the same time, this made Fake next to him very greedy. Captain, can you give me one? Fake Oil asked cautiously. Huh, what did you say? You want Lousy's cherry pie? The expression on Teach's face instantly became angry. You know, when he was in the Whitebeard Pirates, even Saki, who was a chef, did not dare to say you want a piece of Teach's cherry pie. Looking at Teach, whose momentum suddenly became terrifying, Fake Oil couldn't help but swallowed, and then waved his hands repeatedly, Captain, I was joking. How could I want to steal your cherry pie, Captain? You must have heard wrong. 
After listening to fake oil's words, Teach's aura subsided and turned into a calm expression, Gia ha ha ha. That's good, that's good. Fake oil broke out in a cold sweat, but out of curiosity about cherry pie, he still called the guard at the door and wanted him to go to the kitchen to get himself a cherry pie. But who would have expected that the guard would shake his head repeatedly? Sorry, distinguished guest. We have run out of cherries in the kitchen, I'm so sorry. The words of the chess soldier made Fakeu's heart feel cold, but what could he do? I can only wait until I get home to taste this so-called cherry pie. Broken pirates. There are no cherries left. Fake oil cursed in his heart. At the same time. Big mom's room. Not enough. Make me 300 more cherry cakes. Big mom shouted to the door while stuffing cakes into her mouth. Mom, I'm so sorry, there are no more cherries in the kitchen. The soldier's voice at the door became hesitant, although he knew very well that when she couldn't get the food she longed for, the ant's temper would become extremely irritable, and it might even cause her to have thoughts. Eating disorder. But as a home it's created by his aunt, he has no ability to escape. What are you talking about? There are no more cherries. I remember that last time there were nearly a ton of cherries on the fruit island. How could there be no more cherries so soon? Auntie's eyes turned red, she was a very fond of it. She has a sweet tooth, and cherries are an ingredient used more or less in most sweets. Although the snack ingredients she eats must be fresh, even so, the kitchen never runs out of fresh cherries. Reply to mom, actually there are enough cherries, but Blackbeard ordered 500 cherry pies for dinner. In addition, the snacks you have eaten in recent days are more or less mixed with cherries, so. Quote. Cherry pie, cherry pie. Auntie only heard the three words cherry pie, and she kept searching her memory, recalling the unique texture and sweet taste of cherry pie. I want to eat it. The ant's already red eyes turned blood red at this moment, and her huge body stood up slowly. With her fat body and 8.8 .8 meters tall, her whole body was like a hill. Cherry pie. Cherry pie. The ant in this state filled the chess soldier with despair. As an experienced chess soldier, it was impossible for him not to know that the ant's despairing cyphoria had broken out. Mom. Katakori, who had been staying outside the castle, used his super powerful knowledge and domineering power to foresee the situation of the ant. Looking at the blood red eyes and losing his mind, Katakori broke out in a cold sweat. What's going on? Why did my mother's cyphoria come back again? Katakori grabbed the soldier next to him and asked anxiously. Here, mom wants to eat cherry cake, but all the cherries in the kitchen are used to make cherry pie for Blackbeard. And as soon as mom hears the word cherry pie, it triggers her thinking disorder. Are there really no cherries in the kitchen? There's not a single one left. But maybe there's some cherry pie at Blackbeard's. Why did this happen at this time? Katakori had no other choice. He only prayed that Blackbeard would not eat up so many cherry pies. Captain, what happened outside? Auntie's destructive voice spread far away, and even Blackbeard's group sitting in the room could hear it clearly. Lando, who was practicing the law of true fragrance, was very confused. The domineering person cannot perceive what is happening outside. Gia ha ha ha. That guy Auntie seems to have lost control of her emotions. Forget it, don't worry about her. Teach's domineering nature could naturally sense that Auntie was coveting his cherry pie, so he couldn't help but speed up his eating. Boom. The door to the room was violently knocked open. Teach and the others looked up and saw that the person who came was the long-legged Katakori. Katakori glanced around Teach's room. Finally, his eyes lit up and he found the few cherry pies. I'm very sorry, Mr. Blackbeard. Our mother has an attack of schizophrenia, and she needs cherry pie now. But please don't worry, the fruit island will send a lot of fresh cherries to you for tomorrow's tea party. I will compensate you then. Katakori said as he stretched out his hand towards the cherry pie on the table, but the moment he was about to touch the cherry pie, his hockey suddenly sensed the danger. Boom. The long blunderbuss in Van Oka's hand emitted bursts of green smoke. Obviously, the danger Katakori sensed just now was the work of Van Oka. Our captain, it seems you haven't agreed yet. Are you a little rude? Fan Oka said coldly. The shot just now was just a bullet that did not contain hockey. With his superb marksmanship, that bullet was just a bullet. It passed through Katakori's arm and penetrated the table, but no one else was harmed. 
But even so, Katakori's face still looked ugly. The destruction caused by the ant in the state of Syria every second will cause many casualties. He cannot delay for too long. If time goes by, his brother sisters may also be in danger. But, in a while, my sister will marry the captain of your regiment, and then won't we be a family? Katakori gritted his teeth and said, although he was very confident in his own strength, but he is not arrogant enough to face all the monsters in this room by himself. What's more, Blackbeard's strength can defeat the general. Cherry pie. The ant's voice finally came, and the next second, the wall of the room was physically knocked open. A fat and tall figure walked in. Cherry pie. Seeing the cherry pie on the table, the ant stretched out her hand to grab it. But the next second, the cherry pie on the table was taken away by another hand full of luxurious rings. Gia ha ha ha. What? Old lady, you also want to grab the cherry pie from Lousy. Teach's eyes began to turn red, and then, under the gaze of the ant, he stuffed a few cherry pie into his mouth. Asshole. Cherry pie. Want to grab the cherry pie with Lousy. You're probably looking for death. These two top warriors finally fought. The aftermath of the battle left the castle crumbling. Katakori looked on in confusion, and then couldn't help but said, Blackbeard, do you also have Syria? Two top powerhouses stand in separate courts, one is the big mom who suffers from schizophrenia, and the other is Teach who is furious because he almost lost his cherry pie. Cherry pie, you. How dare you eat all my cherry pie. How strong is Auntie in the state of Syria? Her terrifying body will give the answer. Auntie's talent is very high, known as the, born destroyer, he is also called the, evil god, by the giants. The thick wall was shattered as easily as tofu under her fist, and even Teach felt a little overwhelmed by the powerful force. Gia ha ha ha, what a powerful force. However, it is unrealistic to defeat me with just strength. Teach bent his legs into a horse stance, facing Big Mom's fist, he did not dodge, and the three-headed dog fruit his ability burst out, greatly strengthening his physical body. Drink. Teach shouted loudly and swung his right fist forward. The fist, which was only one-fifth the size of Ante, exploded with indescribable power. With one punch, Ante's tall body couldn't help but move backwards. Take three steps back. Zeus, Prometheus. The ant looked at Teach, who was less than half her height, in shock. It was unimaginable that such a bloated body could burst out with such powerful power. But after the shock, I was filled with anger. She is the absolute king in all countries, and everyone must obey her orders. She is the queen of this country. And at this moment, Teach is like an ant provoking her dignity. How can this make her not angry? Although, Teach this ant is a bit scary. Mom. Domi looked at Zeus and Prometheus with red eyes, and the excitement on his face turned into disgust in the next second. I saw Zeus and Prometheus being grabbed by the ant's hands. In an instant, the two innocent and cute little guys turned into ferocious and evil thunder clouds and fireballs full of violence. Got Zeus and Prometheus after that, the aura of the ant suddenly changed. If the ant just now was a furious giant bear with terrifying power but a poor brain. Then now, the ant is a violent tiger, ferocious and yet resourceful. Fire in the sky. The ant clenched the Prometheus in her hand, and then threw it out. The scorching breath instantly filled the entire dilapidated room. The power of fire. Gia ha ha ha. It really is the so-called burning fruit, even dogs won't eat it. Teach sighed while opening his head on his right shoulder and spitting out a ball of fire. However, this fire is actually covered with a bit of cold atmosphere. Hell burns. Teach's flames were not inferior to Big Mom's Prometheus. The two were in a stalemate, but at this moment, Zeus on Big Mom's other hand also launched an attack. Drum. The huge thunder and lightning beams converged into one point, which was as destructive as the God King's war spear. The thunder and lightning contained in it alone may have reached no less than 100 million volts. Gia ha ha ha. Hell ice glutton. The head on Teach's left shoulder opened, and the icy cold air breathed out. The cold air slowly condensed and turned into a strange beast. The power of the beast was terrifying, and the ice that made it up showed no sign of melting when exposed to thunder and lightning. For a moment, Ice Taoist actually started fighting fiercely with Zeus. Well, well, well. What kind of devil fruit is this? Do the three heads control different powers? 
As the four emperors of the new world and the remnant of the old era, Auntie naturally knows more than ordinary people. A lot, but even so, teaches devil fruit has never been heard of by her. There's something even more surprising. After Teach said that, the head in the middle opened its mouth, and a strange black wind raged throughout the room. The next second, the broken room finally couldn't support it anymore. To be able to endure the battle between two four emperors level experts for so long, I have to admit that the people who built this castle really didn't dare to steal any oil or water. Yin Feng. Two cold words came out of Teach's middle mouth, and a bone-chilling black wind rushed towards Auntie. Wherever the black wind passed, the color of the earth instantly turned dark. As soon as the cold wind came out, even the two heads on Teach's left and right were covered. The attack he launched was a bit more powerful. The burning light faced by Prometheus was a bit thicker, and the extremely high temperature even made it feel pain all over its body as a flame. The cold air on Bingtao's body that was fighting with Zeus became even heavier. The increase in coldness gradually transformed Bingtao's body into an armor. Zeus, who was originally evenly matched with Bingtao, was instantly killed and defeated. For a time, Prometheus and Zeus were completely at a disadvantage. Napoleon. As if she hadn't noticed, the ant stretched out her right hand, and the hat on her head instantly flew into the air. When it appeared in her hand, it had turned into a big sword. Gia ha ha ha. What? Do you want to fight in close combat? How could Teach do as she wished? He stretched his hand to his waist, and pulled out two gorgeous pistols, regardless of whether they were pointed at the ant, and then just pulled the trigger. Bang, 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 bang. Four bullets were fired at Auntie. Although three of them missed, one still hit. Looking back at Auntie, the expression on her face did not change. The bullet was like a small grain of sand hitting an elephant, and it did not attract her attention. After all, Auntie also has a nickname. Steel Balloon. It has to be said that the body that Ant is born with is definitely what many people dream of, and its hardness even exceeds the armed domineering power of most people. Eat me with a sword. The ant burst out with a speed that was inconsistent with her fat body. With her body like a meat ball, she pulled a big sword and slashed at Teach's shop. It's not good to look down on Lousy. Teach's right fist was covered with advanced armed color hockey, and on top of the armed color hockey was covered with white light waves. Good guy, this punch is really devastating. Why destroy the world? Just look at Auntie's protruding eyes and you will know. Ah. Uh. The powerful force made the ant's head turn white, and she fell to the ground. Her fat body made the ground scream. Mom. Seeing that the situation was not good, Katakuli picked up his weapon and rushed forward. After all, that woman was still his mother no matter what. Katakori, don't move. Shiryu drew out his thunderstorm and put it on Katakori's neck. Van Oka raised his gun and aimed it at Katakori's head. Shed held the golden big gun. Axe stared at Katakori with an unkind expression. Well, as for fake oil, everyone knows that he is only 2.1 meters tall, but as a loyal supporter of the captain, how could he sit idly by and ignore it? He held his beloved bottle of wine and pressed it against Katakori's, ah, uh, right there. You know. Ah. Mother. Without the support of Big Mom, Prometheus and Zeus were no match for Teach's attack. With two screams, the two powerful homits also fell down. If you have to fight for the cherry pie with Lousy, you'll get beaten. Why bother? Teach patted the non-existent dust on his hands, and the two heads on his shoulders slowly disappeared, and his figure shrank a lot, and then he took out the strong rum and his waist was poured down. Teach didn't use all his strength, and didn't even alert his two sisters. He knocked down Big Mom alone. Of course, this is also the reason why Big Mom didn't use all her strength. After all, if you want to truly defeat an emperor, for a strong person, the difficulty is not ordinary. With Teach's current strength, it would take at least two days to defeat Big Mom. If divided into three classes, Kaido's mother and the red-haired three should be in the third class, and Teach should be in the second class. Although the strength is stronger than those three, it is only a little. Well, well, well. It hurts so much when you hit me. Blackbeard Teach. With her terrifying physique, it only took half a minute for the ant to wake up. Unexpectedly, the ant became thinner when she woke up. He has changed a lot, but his aura remains unchanged. Mom. Are you okay? Upon seeing this, Katakori struggled to break away from the restraints of fake oil and the others, 
quickly came to the ant's side, and helped her up from the ground. H.M.P.H. The ant didn't appreciate it and threw away Katakori's hand that was trying to help him. She jumped up from the ground and picked up Napoleon again. Fight again. We oh. Auntie swung out a huge sword energy. Lando, who was watching the battle, was stunned when he saw this, and then some bad memories seemed to be recalled in his mind. Gia ha ha ha. Is lousy afraid of you? Earthquake. Teach was not afraid at all. The power of the shaking fruit was fully activated, and the violent power confronted Big Mom's attack. The people watching the battle couldn't help but narrow their eyes. After several hours of fighting, Perospero finally came here with a freshly baked cherry pie and stopped the fight. Otherwise, this cake island might have sunk to the bottom of the sea due to the fight between the two. Sure enough, the island position in the pirate world is definitely an extremely dangerous existence. Well, well, well. It's so delicious. Hey, Blackbeard, don't fight over the cherry pie with me. The ant sat on the floor, crazily stuffing cherry pie into her mouth. She looked like a hungry wolf who hadn't eaten for several years. Gia ha ha ha. Don't be so stingy. I am also a guest after all. And after a while, our two pirate groups will become companions. It's just a few cherry pies, I believe it can't shake the relationship between us let's go. Teach said shamelessly, her rude eating look was no less than that of a crazy ant. Phew. I'm finally full. Well, 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 well. The ant lay on the ground with her bulging belly. Those white leggings were really eye-catching. Ahem. I have to admit that your pirate team's chef's skills are quite good. Teach pulled a metal spike from Katakori's clothes, sat on the ground and shaved his teeth leisurely. Now that the distinguished guests have finished their meal, let's take an early rest. Dafu, please take a few distinguished guests to your residence. Tomorrow's tea party will be grand. You will definitely linger over it. Although Perospero's combat ability is not as good as Katakori, but his identity in the entire pirate group is like a big butler, handling all kinds of things. Everyone, please come with me. Katakori's brother Charlotte Daifuku arranged a new residence for several people. After such a long battle, Teach was already tired and said a few words to several others. Afterwards, he returned to his room and fell asleep. A night of silence. The next day. Today is the 43rd wedding of the four emperor's aunt. Many people who received the invitation came early in the morning. In a huge park, countless luxurious tables and chairs were arranged in an orderly manner. Everyone present was overwhelmed. One is not a tycoon who is quite famous in some aspects. Well, well, well. Perospero, are all the distinguished guests here. There is no doubt that Big Mom is sitting in the first place. The pressure brought by that huge body is not something that ordinary people can bear. However, after all, Big Mom is a pirate the group is about to become partners with the Whitebeard Pirates, so Teach is very proud to sit next to Big Mom. Well, except for the business tycoon matchmaker Liang Xin, all the other distinguished guests are here. Perospero said respectfully, and at the same time, he silently felt unfortunate for the business tycoon. After all, the consequences of rejecting his mother's invitation would be serious. Very serious. Oh. It has been many years since anyone dared to miss my tea party. Forget it, today is my wedding day. Just follow the old rules and give him a, gift. The smile on the ant's face was very kind, but in but most of the people present were trembling. Of course they knew Auntie's rules. For them, Auntie's invitation to a tea party was something they could never refuse. Well, well, well. Welcome everyone to come to my wedding. Now that all the distinguished guests have taken their seats, let's start the wedding. In fact, the ant also sent invitations to the beast pirates and the red-haired pirates, but with Kaido and Shank's pissing habits, they won't even pay attention to this crazy like Big Mom. As time passed, the groom entered the scene. What surprised Teach was that this so-called groom turned out to be an extremely strange race. Caterpillar man. Their bodies are very long, and they have many hands and feet. Well, how can I put it, the ant's taste is indeed good. At least the groom has a handsome face. Although this tea party is a wedding, in fact, the ant went up and went through the motions and it ended. He didn't care about his wedding. All she cared about was the piles of delicious snacks and exquisite gift boxes at the tea party. This tea party lasted for a long time, and the most eye-catching thing was the table between Teach and Auntie. 
After all, the other tables did not have tons of snacks. After the gluttonous feast, Blackbeard and his party left here early. After all, it will be Rikuyo's wedding in a while. The Whitebeard pirates are the strongest pirate group. They have to go back and prepare. Naturally, they can't leave their father behind. Reputation. Actually, there is another reason. Huh. This is a gift from the Blackbeard pirates. Why is there only one Bailey in it? The ant looked at Bailey in the box and fell into deep thought. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support our channel.